Deacon Sakari. We back at it like a crack at it. They done let them bruise in the dough. In this wicked industry. Damn, to shine the light. Uh. They done let them bruise in the dough. Oh shit. They done let them bruise in the dough. They done let them bruise in the dough. Uh, uh. They done let them bruise in the dough. We ain't going nowhere. He bruise. He bruise. He bruise. He brew, uh, he brew, they done let them bruise in the dough, they done let them bruise in the dough, look, Joe Biden need the free dark low, the hell is wrong with dude, no Alamolek, but I got perfect vision in the dark, I'm a lexicon, I'm a megalodon, all my verses ripping them apart, mosaic law with the church is missing, it's the worst religion from the start, in my soul where the word is written, out of circumcision, out of heart, I'm rocking my fringes, I'm in Seattle, rocking like Hendrix, no industry gimmicks, you rappers are finished, I'm kicking the door off the hinges, Throwing stones like you sinless till you get the finish. You should have repented in a minute. This proof is endless. They loving the image. I know what happened to Kim. What happened to Kim? I keep my pencil on point, no sharpener. Used to weigh pounds of throw. I lay down the flow like carpenters. She causing division in the sisterhood. I'm marking on. I'm preparing the way for the harvester. I'm a harbinger. Cops hop out, we bail on them. Leviticus, I like my fish with scales on them. Ask Chief E from he could vouch. We be putting in the work while you sitting on the couch. Camp haters quiet as a mouse. Yeah, ready. Shout out to my brother Austin Trout. Just as a reminder, if there's doubt, I wear every single fringe, even when I'm in the house. Yep. They a Pentecost in the synagogue. I've been a boss every minute, cost me. And I got the dinner sauce. They call me Pace Picante. They put beef on my plate, and I ate the onion. Get all your truth music at DeaconSakari.com. That's nine albums. We even got a couple free for y'all. Support the cause, y'all. Children's Bibles with black and brown images. All on DeaconSakari.com. Even your head wraps. Stay dipped. Stay brewed dripping. All right. DeaconSakari.com. All right, y'all. Go to CZYN.network. CZYN.network. We done with Patreon. No more Patreon. CZYN.network. You're going to get videos too hot for YouTube or early releases. So go sign up. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Not only do you get Deacon Sakari's content, you get Gorilla Hebrew content, Hassad content, other camps putting their content on this platform. We need our own app, so sign up using promo code Deacon Sakari. C-Z-Y-N dot network. It's our own app, our own platform. The white man can no longer vert or hide or try to censor this truth. So sign up and get this heat. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Promo code Deacon Sakari. CZYN. Popping mollies and putting powder in your nostrils. We be in the trenches, needles under benches. We be giving them the gospel. I keep 12 Sakari members with me. We be moving like apostles. True. Some sisters is dead traps, hair wraps, but you still a thought though. The church don't even know the truth. They can even tell you you an Israelite. The Arabs selling you all the switches and the malt liquor are the Ishmaelites. You can show a nigga slave ships and the Bible still won't get it right. Until the time's out, then a nigga gotta find out what them missiles like. Mike check, Mike check, Mike check, Mike, my mic, Mike. Oh man, we got a good one today. Ladies and gents, we got a good one today. First and foremost, let's give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. We do so by Shema Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. That's all praises to the Heavenly Father in the name of His only begotten Son in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. Peace, love, and blessings. <coughs> To my brothers and sisters in the chat, faithful supporters and, and avid learners and studiers of the word of God, all praises for you guys. Make sure you hit that like button and share it for these rudimentary, low-level uh, uh, imbeciles and insults, I like to call it, who have this dummy doctrine on what a mamzer is. Why is this so important, y'all? Because they are trying to exclude the seed of Jacob, the seed of Jacob. You understand? 
I can't wait. Let me put some links in the chat. If you think a mamzer is a mixed person, I got some links in the chat so I can crack some heads real quick. Peacefully. Peacefully, theologically, and intellectually, and philosophical. So now, uh, fresh link in the chat if you think a mamzer is a mixed person. Because we got a problem here. And this shows a few things that the, 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 the world of academia and scholarship looks at us as complete jokes when we make stupid statements like a mamzer is a mixed person. It also shows that a nigga worships the white man because you rely solely on the James Strong's, that deep, that devil, his definition of what a mamzer is. That's for two. And for three, I was going somewhere. I forgot. Oh, and that you are excluding the seed of Jacob. The man carries the seed according to biology, according to the Bible, according to the Most High, et cetera, et cetera. The water sister Tanya greatly appreciates you. You are excluding the seed of Jacob, right? So let's, uh, without further ado, you know, let's get right into it because this is going to be a good one today. This is going to be a good one today. Look at this. Look at this. Isaiah. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. I was saved. Is that, is that, let me see. Let me see if I'm old or if I'm still young. Let me see if I'm old or if I'm still young. Let me see if I'm old or still young. <sighs> am I older or am I still young? No story. Come on, don't embarrass me like this, Lord. Don't embarrass me like this, Lord. Oh, in Christ. The most high, you just embarrass me in front of all you guys. Okay, hold on. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right, I'm still young. All praises. So here we go. Jeremiah 30 and 10. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 10. It says, Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, here we go, y'all, I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of their captivity. So a Negro only or just somebody who's very intellectually um, insufficient or inadequate, just for lack of better words, trying to be polite. Uh, the seed comes from the man. The seed comes from the man. So if the seed of Jacob is planted into any woman that may not be Jacob, that that seed is still a product of Jacob which is why the Most High is saying he will save his seed. And our dear beloved brothers and sisters who are so far gone and low level, <clears throat> they are excluding their, what, what, what Yahweh Shai said, what Christ said, they're shutting up the kingdom of heaven. They're shutting up the kingdom of heaven. And we're not doing that. The Bible don't teach that. The Bible don't do that. So what we want to do is this. We want to go and show if they're correct if they are correct <laughs> we got a side in the building but listen y'all if they are correct okay hold on all right yosef yosef ben yosef what's going on brother what's going on can you hear me yeah we hear you what's your school of thought on this on this topic well first of all um what do you believe that the Congregation of the Lord is. I just asked you a question. Don't answer a question with a question. Hello? Yosef bin Yosef. All right. Come back in when you get some better Wi Fi. Three, two, one. All right. We're going to get Yosef and Yosef in here. No. <laughs> Let me put another link back in the chat. 
we're going we're gonna to wait to see if he wants to come on here because clearly he probably believes a manager is a mixed person. So let's uh, let's bring this out. <clears throat> but uh, I'm going to wait for him. But what we're going to do is we're going to go through a list of kings. And if these guys are right, because they worship the white man's definition so much of, of what a man is instead of learning that context supersedes etymology, if they had any scholarship, then uh, if they're definite, if the white man's definition that they subscribe to is correct, then we got a whole lot of kings that were mamzers ruling over Israel. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord was on them. They walked through the temple. We elected them. They were righteous. And so we got a problem here because the Bible says uh, actual mamzer cannot enter, the, enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. You understand? One second. Let me pull up one scripture while we wait for Yosef Ben Yosef to bring that smoke. I see Yosef Ben Yosef got some smoke. Let me see. Why is this doing this? One second, y'all. Um, let me see if I can find it like this. And mighty man. Okay, where is it at? Is it Second Samuel? Second Samuel twenty three. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. All right, we got. All right, Yosef, we got you back on. What's up, man? Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. So we were asking. What's your school of thought as it pertains to this, this topic? I got to agree with everybody and say that a mamzer is a, is a half breed. Okay. So you agree with the, the, the James. The majority. Song, that, which is everybody's making that uh, de de declarative un statement. Uh, predicated on James Strong's definition on what a man's is. So my question to you is, were Moses' kids mamzers? Definitely. Well, why does this, what is a mamzer? It's having a Israelite father and a heathen mother. Like what is a mamzer's ethnicity? You mean what what nation of people they are? Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess it all depends on if he goes with the mom, he will be he will be whatever nation she she's with. But if he's living in Israel, then he'll be able to live amongst the other members. So, but he but, but he can't come into the congregation. What is the congregation? Huh? What is the congregation according to the Bible? According to the Bible, the congregation is the camp. It's where the Israelites live. Okay, so a mamzer can't live amongst Israelites. That's correct. Okay. So why did King David have what Ammonites and Moabites in his mighty men, army of mighty men? And why why also was Moses' kids called priests? And of the tribe of Levi. Uh, bring that out where they were called priests. I didn't read that one. All right. All right. But while you're looking that up, do you do you um, subscribe to the um, the uh, Septuagint? I mean, I, I reference it, but I don't put it over the Dead Sea Scrolls and Masoretic texts. I, I feel you. I feel you. Um, so let, me just, let me just bring this out real quick. Uh, Second Chronicles 23 and 14. It says, now concerning Moses, the man of God, his sons were named of the tribe of Levi. So if his kids are members, why is the Bible reckoning them as Levites? Being a Levite don't mean you're a priest. Well, I'm asking you one, and then I'm going to show you that they were priests. 
So how can a mamzer be of the tribe of Levi? That means he's living in the tribe. You said they can't live in the camp. How are they of the tribe of Levi and getting the inheritance of, of the Levites? That's what I mean when, when, you first, when you first asked me the question. I said they can live amongst us, but they can't live within a the camp. They'll have to live in the outskirts of wherever we are, like the rest of the strangers. Okay. First Chronicles 23. So the rest of the strangers, why does the Bible say that the strangers could be on the outer court of the temple if they can't be in the camp? No? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, you said that the congregation is living amongst the camp of the Israelites. Right. So I'm right. asking you, why does the Bible say the stranger can come amongst the outer court if they can't be in the camp? Well, they could go sacrifice like so everybody else. In so they can be in the camp. No. Um, well, the tabernacle of the congregation is the temple. So Israelites can go into the inner camp. I mean, the inner court, but strangers cannot go within the inner court. We okay. know that the Levites, Levites are the only ones that can go into the temple. Israelites cannot. Not even all so, Levites, first of all. The holies of holies is only for the Aaron and the high priest. I, so, I agree with that. But you within the temple, you have the inner temple and then you have the the um, holy of holies, which only the high priest can go into. But okay. in the outer court, I mean, in the inner court, you have um, you have where they do the sacrifices, where the Israelites could go into and strangers and nobody else can go into. But strangers can be on the outside of that court. Right. <clears throat> Right, but you said that they can't even come amongst the camp. But let me read this, because you said that Moses' kids were mamzers. So it says that you. they were of the tribe of Levi. And then it mentions these guys. Look at this. It mentions Gershom, Eliezer. It mentions his sons. 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 It mentions his son. It mentions his son. Look at this, verse 24. These were the sons of Levi after the house of their fathers, even the chief of the fathers, as they were counted by the number of the name of their poles. Listen to this, young man, that did the work for the service of the house of the Lord. So Moses and his children, Mo I'm sorry, Moses' children and their children were named Levites and doing the work, the priestly duties for the house of the Lord. So how are you again saying that these kids are mamzers? A mixed person is a mamzers when his kids were mixed and they were still resting after the tribe of Levi and priests to the Lord's temple. What scripture is that? Can you can you throw that? You Second said Chronicles 23 and 24. Second Chronicles 23 and 24. Give me one second. Sorry, brother. Give me one second. No, you're good. 23, Second Chronicles 23 and 24. Uh, what, what chapters? Second Chronicles chapter. Uh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Chapter 23. Yeah. Chapter 23, verse 24. Do you feel like you're you're you might be out on your feet, maybe from this from this headshot? I don't. I mean, Second Chronicles or First Chronicles? I'm sorry, First Chronicles, chapter twenty-three, verse twenty. Okay, First Chronicles. Okay, I'm. I I could. I didn't see it. Give me one second. Oh, twenty-three, twenty-four, and there were sons of. Levi after the house of their fathers. These were the sons of Levi after their fathers. Sons of Eliezer died and the sons of the daughters. Uh, brother, it doesn't say that. What does it mean when it says that did the work for the service of the house of the Lord? You talking about the sons of Merari, brother? And Eliezer died, and his sons and daughters and Kish. What does it say? The sons of um, of Moses. I mean, the, yeah, the sons of Moses. 
<laughs> Show me where it says that. Okay. Now concerning Moses, verse 14. Start at verse 14. All right, got you. Go his ahead. Sons were named, his sons. Who's, whose sons is, is, are they getting ready to name here, brother? Now concerning Moses, the man of God, his sons were named the, uh, the tribe of Levi. Okay, got you. Right. So it says the son of Moses were the sons Gershom of Moses were Gershom and Eleazar. Of the yeah, sons he, of Gershom, of the sons of Gershom and of the sons of Eleazar. So it's naming all their sons here. And it says that they did the work for the service of the house of the Lord. So if a mixed person is a mamzer, according to your faulty understanding, with all due respect, my brother, we got a huge problem here because now we got mamzers in the temple. And the Lord said that what? A mamzer can't go into the congregation, which is the temple, not just living in Israel uh, forever, even to the 10th generation. So what are we doing here? You're right. It does. It does say that his sons were in the temple. Were they breaking the law or? Well, I can't say they were breaking the law because they didn't have the law. The law didn't come until Moses after. So. So were they mamzers or not? After? Huh? Are they still are they still mamzers or do you take that back? Uh, I'm I'm going to have to uh, do some more study on that, so I'm going to have to take that one back. Okay, that's fine. So now let's go so, to another. So one. I mean, if if you once the law drops, after, you said show you after the law. Yeah. Okay. So let's deal with uh King Solomon, right? King Solomon. First Kings 11 and 1, King Solomon loved many strange women, right? Right. Together with the daughters of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites. Let's key here on Ammonites. So he had Ammonite women. He had babies with them Ammonite women. According to you, they would be mamzers, right? Right. Okay. So King Rehoboam. Was King Rehoboam a mamzer? Yes. Okay. So if King Rehoboam is a mamzer, why do we elect him to be over us? And why did he walk through the temple? Well, he didn't first, walk into the temple. He was in an inner court. But I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. He was there. Read this. Let me just read this for, for uh, the brothers and sisters as well. And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, the son of Solomon, um, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 41 years old and we began to reign 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there and his mother's name was Naamah and Ammonitis. So according to your understanding, Rehoboam would be a mamzer, right? Right. Okay, now, anyone who comes from his loin, his seed would be a mamzer too because it says even to the 10th generation, they could not enter to the congregation even forever, right? Well, no. There is a uh, the the Egyptians and the uh, Edomites that can come in in a third generation. If you have if you breed with them, they can come in in a third generation. Okay, let's read this. Deuteronomy and, twenty and three. A bastard. You're saying this is a mixed person shall not right. enter into the congregation, even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation. So I'm going to ask you a question. What is a bastard? And I asked you before, do, do, do you subscribe to the Septuagint? Not over the Masoretic Text and Dead Sea Scrolls. Okay, and in Deuteronomy 23, it says um, it says something totally different from what a, ba a bastard is. Okay, so let's just say, I'm going to entertain you for a second here quickly. Let's just say um, an Egyptian. So now you're saying a bastard is a mixed person outside of an Egyptian or Edomite. They can't enter into the congregation forever. I can only base it off what the Bible says. And if you go to 20, if you go to Deuteronomy 23, verse seven and eight, it says, do not abhor an Edomite and do not abhor an Egyptian because you were a stranger in their land. But children born unto them shall enter into the congregation in the third generation. So if you do have a relationship with the Edomite, after the third generation, they can come into our congregation, me and yours, or an Egyptian. 
Okay, that's 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 fine. I'm I'm gonna entertain that even though I disagree with you. But let's just entertain your understanding. I mean, and see. I mean, how do you, how do you how do you how do you interpret that? I'll, I'll I'll tell you once I'm done landing my plane here, so to speak. Okay. So, All right. so anybody an Israelite that mixes with any other nation outside of Egyptian or Edomite, they they can't enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Right. Um, I wouldn't say that. It's kind of hard for me to say that because Israelites have been hooking up with Canaanites for thousands of years. So, I mean, I don't know. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm telling you here. A bastard you're saying is a mixed person shall not yeah. enter into the congregation of the Lord. Listen closely. Right. Even to his tenth generation shall he right. not enter. So either you agree with the Bible or you don't. It says I agree. I agree bastard. with the Bible. Okay, so whatever a bastard is, this ba a bastard cannot enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Yeah. Okay. So if a bastard is a mixed person, let's just say any mixed person outside of Egyptian or Edomite, they can't enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Their descendants. Right. I would have to agree. I mean, I can only base it off what the Bible says. And yeah. OK. Now, here's the problem, brother. In Matthew. Chapter one, you said Rehoboam, you agree that Rehoboam was mixed in Matthew one, verse seven. Here's Rehoboam in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, real name, Yahweh Shai's lineage. So that means everybody who came from Rehoboam, according to your understanding, is a mamzer and cannot enter into the congregation. Do you want to know who came out of his uh, his loins, Rehoboam? A man uh, named... All, all, all the kings did. Okay, so Jesus Christ is a mamzer? He's not. I thought any product of Rehoboam would be a mamzer. Well, I believe Rehoboam is up into the third generation, so... Oh, but it says 10th generation here. Well, that's why I said, do you subscribe to the Septuagint? Because it doesn't say the 10th generation. <laughs> okay. The Septuagint right. doesn't say it. It, it. it leaves it out. But this, the King James or the Masoretic text says it, it is. That's, okay. that's why I'm asking you. Okay. So do you have, let's go to the Greek Septuagint real quick. Okay. I'm going right. to show, show you why. The Greek Septuagint is not authoritative over two. How does the Torah work? It says two witnesses, right? So right. Adam, we only got three ancient manuscripts that we get our Old Testament from. That's the Greek Septuagint, the Masoretic Text, and the Dead Sea Scrolls. Both the Masoretic Text and Dead Sea Scrolls say to the 10th generation. So if there is a discrepancy within the LXX, the Greek Septuagint, then we have to apply proper Torah hermeneutics and go with the other the, the two witnesses, the majority witnesses. But and where do we get the Masoretic text from? What do you mean? Where do we get the Masoretic text from? What? Where did we get that from? Is, is that straight from the Dead Sea Scroll or something no. else? No, no, that's no, a no. question. It's from a earlier Hebrew sources. Is it? I mean, it's not from the. It's not from the the Latin Vulgate. Mm, well. Not all of it. Some of it is, but before the Latin Vulgate, the Masoretic text was already being compiled. So I would say maybe a small amount of maybe trying to correspond or reference. Yes, but the Masoretic text started getting compiled in one in, in the first century AD due to a plurality of Hebrew manuscripts, and they just wanted to consolidate it into one. Well, let me ask you a question. Did 70... Israelite Hebrews translate the Hebrew to the Septuagint under Ptolemy? Yes, they did. And they also made a holy day in mourning because it was so horrible to translate our Hebrew scriptures to Greek. And we didn't do it by desire. We It was forced on us to do that so the Greeks could spread their Greek mythology and also establish their uh, library of Alexander. I don't disagree with that, but it, it was Israelites that did it, right? 
Yes. Okay. Well, let me show you this in the Greek Septuagint. Let me show you why the Greek Septuagint is so faulty. So you're saying that in Deuteronomy 23, the Greek Septuagint is saying that a mamzer can't enter into the congregation for the 10th generation is not in there? Yeah. Okay. So this is the Greek Septuagint. You got Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 1. Look what this says. And that day they read in the book of Moses in the ears of the people, and it was found written in the in it, that the Amorites and Moabites should not enter into the congregation of God forever. So here in the Greek Septuagint, when you read in Nehemiah 13 and 1, it's still saying that the 10th generation is a Hebrew idiom basically for forever. Let's go back here and show I, you. I don't that. disagree with that, but in the Septuagint, it also says that an Ammonite and a Moabite can't enter into the 10th generation. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not my contention. My contention is verse 2. Okay. So because now, in verse 3, it says an Ammonite and a Moabite, and that's also in the Septuagint. Okay. So what is the congregation? We agree. The congregation that, is the camp. What is the camp? Where Israel lived, and we can go, we can go to Numbers chapter one, verse forty-seven, and we can read it all the way through. Okay. And it'll tell you what the camp is. Okay. It's it's where wh how they had it was. Let me tell you. Something says that the sanctuary is the congregation. The sanctuary is not. The sanctuary is if the sanctuary was a congregation, none of us can enter it because only Levites can enter it, and if any Israelite enter into it, we'll die. No, it's not. It's not about entering. It's about congregating amongst the temple. That's what we have to do when we bring sacrifice. Um, so in no. Lamentations one and ten, it says the adversary has spread his hand upon all her pleasant things, for she has seen that the heathen entered into her sanctuary. Look at this. So the heathen entered into the sanctuary. Watch this. Whom thou didst command that they should not enter into thy congregation. So why is the Bible making the sanctuary synonymous with the congregation? Well, you're reading Jeremiah's Lamentations and the and the so Babylonians wrong. just the Babylonians have just um, went into the temple and 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 just started destroying stuff. So he was wrong. He's lamentating that. over that. And yes, you um, uh, strangers cannot go into it. And they did. OK, so let that's me, what Jeremiah is talking about. Let me just get this straight before we conclude. OK, when go the, ahead. The Masoretic text and the Dead Sea Scrolls say that a, a mamzer can't enter into the congregation of the Lord forever, even to his 10th generation. You don't agree with that. You go with the Greek Septuagint's rendering. Hold on one second. Do, a do you want me to go again? A man who would go with a Greek, a Hebrew Israelite who would go with a Greek translation. Do you, have you heard about a, something called the Palestinian canon? I mean, why am I even asking you that? Do you, what's the difference between the Palestinian canon and the Alexandrian canon? I brought up the Septuagint because Israelites translated it. It wasn't no one else, it was the Israelites. Were they and forced it, to translate it, it, yes or no? What happened? Were they forced to translate their scriptures in Hebrew to Greek? Can you tell me when uh, Israelites were not forced to do stuff? We were forced to work in this country for 400 years. We're still doing it. That's because that what is that supposed to mean for us? But um, if you need if you need a precept on uh, Lamentations one and ten, it's uh, Jeremiah fifty one fifty one, bro. Um, but like I said, the congregation of the Lord is the people, and and I can I can give you a precept for that too. Okay, if you need so it. no no. So if that's if 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 that's correct, no Ammonites or Moabites can live amongst Israelites. Yes, that's true. Because if you if you go back to Nehemiah, when when they brought why out when they Ruth, brought why out, was Ruth living amongst why was Ruth living amongst Israelites? Hold on, hold on a second, brother. Let me just say this, brother, and then yeah, and then yeah. you can ask me about Ruth because I know you were going to go there. Go ahead. But when they brought out the law, and and they and they talked about the scripture you brought out when they when they said that an Ammonite and a Moabite can't come into the congregation, what did they do, brother? They separated themselves from them. They didn't separate from the temple. They moved away from those people because they're not allowed to be among those people, brother. Okay. So was King David wrong, which I'm going to go back to my initial point. 
Ruth, Ruth the Moabite, right? She was a right. Moabite. She lived yes. among Israelites. Was that wrong? Um. So you um, have you ever heard of the um, what is it called when um, and uh, I think it's Deuteronomy twenty five when yeah um, a man, when a man has a wife yeah. and then I and then that person dies and then the brother is supposed to marry her yeah um, what is it called I can't remember it's called the duty of uh, I forget the duty of something you're raising up seed to your to your kinsmen. Yes, um, kinsman something. You're yes, right, 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 right. But I gotta find it, brother. Give me a second. I know what you're talking about, but can you be precise and concise here? Yeah. So Boaz, in order to get the land back, he had to marry. He had to marry Ruth because Ruth was a part of it. Because Ruth was already married to um, Naomi husband. I can't remember what his name was. So if he wanted to to buy the land back, because he asked the person, he said, you're the next kinsman. So if you want to buy the land, you also have to marry her. But he said he can't do that. So <laughs> Boaz had to. I, I can show you the scriptures. Let me just let me just go to Ruth, brother. You know, you know what I'm you know what I'm talking about. Let me go no, to Ruth. Listen, listen, listen. So what you're doing is basically saying that you don't agree with the word of God. I'm explain to you why. It says an Ammonite or Moabite can't enter the congregation of the Lord forever. But you're saying, oh, they can if they, they where is that in the law where it says if they marry in, with an Israelite, then they can live amongst the Israelites. I never that, said she was. Hello? Go ahead. Hello? Can you hear me? Is that, yeah, is that what you're saying? No, I'm, I'm telling you that an Ammonite and a Moabite and the Moabites cannot live amongst Israel. That's what okay. I'm telling you. Well, why did Ruth live amongst Israelites? Because they're under the law, he had no choice but to marry her. That was the law. Okay, so they can live amongst us if we marry them. Number one, brother, we're not oh. supposed to marry other nations. He okay. he oh. when they when they left, when they left. They wasn't supposed to marry other nations. They left. He married her. So all of a sudden, under the law, uh, she had to have a, um, a a kindred something. I can't remember the name of it. But so you can commit a sin if so. Boaz committed a sin, according to you. Boaz did not commit a sin because under the law, he had to take her if he wanted to get the land. Okay, so it's a sin to marry. A non-Israelite, unless Damn. you want their land. I don't. Oh, I don't understand what what you. What are you? What are you trying to say? I don't understand. No, you, you're saying that it's a sin. What Boaz what did? Hell? No, you're saying it's not a sin. What Boaz did because he had to do it under the law. Yes. What the okay. hell is it? <laughs> come on, brother. Come out with something. I'm okay. waiting. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to get your 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 train of thought here. Your okay, so here. Uh, we we know <laughs> that Moabites. We know Moabites and Ammonites cannot come into the congregation. I'm showing you the Septuagint where it doesn't say in verse two that um that it doesn't say into the tenth generation with the bastard. Yeah, I'm but, telling you that it does not say the tenth generation. Somebody added it to the the um the King James, but in the, in the Septuagint it doesn't say. Hold on, somebody added it to the King James. Let's see if tenth generation is in the Masoretic text. How you got a whole Hebrew Israelite putting the Greek Septuagint over the Dead Sea Scrolls and Masoretic text? Now look at this. Here we go. Oh, right judges. Tenth generation. Is right here in the Hebrew, not the King James, bro. What it all boils down to is that your doctrine, with all due respect, brother, is so weak and rudimentary and low level and elementary that you have to try to patch it up with, with uh, 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 basically idiotic logic and then one misinterpreted or error in the Greek Septuagint, which I could show probably another hundred more errors in the Greek Septuagint, right? So. We're not taking that 
over the Dead Sea Scrolls and Masoretic Text. And not just that, brother. We don't need to just bank on verse 2 here in Deuteronomy 23 at all. The point is, is that you said that an Ammonite and a Moabite can't enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Then you cut yourself by saying, well, Ruth was, but he had to marry her. And then what about in King David's mighty men, there were uh, Ammonites and Moabites within King David's mighty men. Was King David wrong for bringing them into the congregation? I don't believe just for no, the no, record, no, no, no. I, 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 I can I, I can deal with that. I can deal with that. Hold on, hold on. Just for the record, everybody, we at the Sakari do not believe that the congregation of the Lord, as it is right here, is dealing with just living in Israel because there's hella heathens that lived in Israel amongst righteous men and even had their slaves and servants. So hold on a second. So so when we had Moabites as slaves, because it says we could buy the heathen as slaves, were we committing sin? We could buy oh. Moabite heathen slaves and have them living with us. They're living in Israel amongst us. As our slave? Yes, we can have slaves. Okay, That's Leviticus so now, 25. Now they can enter into the congregation of the Lord if they're slaves. As as slaves, yes. They can't, they can't, yeah. they can't be one of us. They 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 can't be equal with us. No, they can't. If they if, if we buy like a Levite, a Levite can buy a slave. Do you know and how that slave, and that slave that slave can know? eat the that slave can eat the um the the uh the offering, but but, do you but know a regular that person cannot won't add to the law of God. You're adding to the law here. You said you're saying it doesn't say ten generation. You're adding and taking away. That's that's a blasphemy, bro. You you need to repent, my you need to repent, my nigga. I'm not trying to see you get judgment. Because you're saying you're taking away from this saying it doesn't say 10 generation. Then you're adding to it saying, well, if you're an Egyptian or an Edomite or uh, if you're a slave, you can. Uh, you're just adding to it. OK, Leviticus 25 says that we can buy slaves and then we can pass them down to our children. You, you disagree with that? Because I know you, you, and, you and Hassan was killing Mike Holloway about that when y'all had a debate with him. Oh, so you watch our debates. How you definitely, our debates? definitely. How you watch our debates in our classes and you still have this outdated, faulty understanding on what a man is. No, well, I don't listen to, I don't, I don't listen to, I don't listen to Sakari. I listen to one person in your group and that's you, that's it, bro. But anyways, okay, so anyways. You to your guns that a man is a mixed person. Are you sticking to it? Yeah, brother, I'm gonna prove it to you. Okay. Well, let me. I'm gonna prove it. Can I prove it to you? Let me bring up two instances. Okay, go ahead. Let me bring up two instances because I just want to conclude. We dealt with Deuteronomy 23. I'm gonna bring up two instances. I'm gonna let you make a point, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna finish the broadcast, bringing out some scripture. Okay, so, can you can can you can you go to uh, seven and eight and deal with those first about the Edomites and uh, and the Egyptians? Yeah. So what I'll do is since. You're asking me to explain, and we can just let the brothers and sisters um, take it take it as they will. I think brothers and sisters, at least on this channel, are smart enough to know when something sounds bugged out or not. Okay, Deut so what do you believe a bastard is? Let me explain, King. Deuteronomy 23. Let's take a look at the definition. Let's take a look at the definition here in the Hebrew. Now, the first thing that people hold to is bastard why because they love white people but really and truly it's child of incest how do we know look what it says jewish father and heathen mother how do we know the the usage is wrong here on these other alternate definitions is because they go against the bible you are who your father is in the bible so it can't be that and we show examples of moses children Solomon's children who were kings, King David's children who had heathen mothers still being kings, and, and King David himself coming from Ruth the Moabite, Jephthah. We show these examples, not just with kings, with other people in the Bible who are reckoned to be Israelites who had a heathen mother. So it can't be what every what James Strong is saying here or what everybody takes as the first definition. It would have to be a child of incest, and it further explains it in the context. Well, so, hold on. Let me just give my dissertation real quick. 
and then I'll let you respond. So a mamzer, a child of incest, cannot enter into the congregation of the Lord. What is the congregation of the Lord? We went to Lamentations 1, and we showed you that the Bible says that the congregation of the Lord is actually the sanctuary or the temple. That's Lamentations 1 and 10. We'll get it one more time. Uh, so it's, a, it's saying the sanctuary. Brother, can, can Israelites go into the temple? Did I not just say congregating amongst the temple earlier? So let me finish, then you can respond. Back to Deuteronomy 23. Bastard, being incest, cannot congregate amongst the temple of God forever. It gives an example with the very next verse on what a mamzer is, because an Ammonite and a Moabite are incest babies. Verse 3, an Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their tenth generation, shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord. So when you get down to verse seven and six, don't abhor an Edomite for his eye, brother. Don't abhor an Egyptian because thou was a stranger in his land. Watch this. The children that are begotten of them, meaning when they come to our land, the Edomites and Egyptians, and they start having children amongst themselves, their children can now come offer sacrifice at the temple after three or four generations. Why? Because they're learning our law, statutes and commandments. That's all this means. This has nothing to do with a mixed person, because as we showed, if that's true, you have Mamzer in the lineage of our Lord. You believe in the New Testament, right? Yeah. Okay. If what you're saying is true, we have Mamzers in our Lord's genealogy. He would be a Mamzer and unworthy to sit on the throne of the Heavenly Father. We have King David coming from Mo, uh, uh, Moab. I'm sorry, uh, Ruth. Yeah, Moabite. So how is, let me ask you that. How the hell, because you agree that Ruth is a Moabite, and the Bible tells you Ruth is a Moabite. How you have King David coming through a Moabite, which can't enter into the congregation forever, but you're saying that King David is not a Mamzer? I'm sorry, he's not a product of a Moabite? As I said, it was, it, it was under the law that Boaz had to marry her. Under the law. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> the, the near it's the near kinsman the near kinsman you have right. you had to marry her for naomi or naomi wouldn't have had a son okay or or, or offspring oh. or whatever so now now our moral bite can't enter into the can enter into the congregation according to you but god is saying they can't who should we believe yosef ben yosef or god himself hmm I'm gonna let you answer your question, ask your question like I said I would. So in, in, in verse seven and eight of Deuteronomy 23, you're saying that those children are not half breeds of Israelite and Edomite or Edom uh, Israelite Egyptian? You're no. saying that they're, you're, they're other nation of people? I'm saying that these are Edomites and Egyptian. When they come to our land, after three generations of them having kids with each other, then their kids can enter into the congregation. So you're saying that strangers can't, you're saying strangers can't um, sacrifice? No, they can sacrifice, but specifically right here, it's saying that the Edomites and the Egyptians, after three generations, they have to, they can, their children can now enter into the congregation or congregate amongst the temple and bring sacrifice. That's just so how the system was set up. So you're saying every nation that live amongst us can sacrifice except a Egyptian and Edomite into the third generation. That's what the book says. No, the book says that if you have with those people, they can't come in into the third generation. Where does it say that if you mix with them in verse eight? Why does it say do not abhor Edomite? Because we not, we're not supposed to stop them from congregating amongst the temple to bring sacrifice after the third generation. So why didn't it say just why wouldn't why wouldn't it say do not abhor strangers? Because the two particular nations in question. Never mind, brother. Never mind. Let's, let's get into this. Okay, so I'm gonna let you ask. I'm gonna let you ask a couple questions, and then at this point, it's if you're just gonna not agree with the word of God, there's no point of a conversation. So Bro, I'm, let you I'm bringing I'm bringing out the Bible. 
I'm going to let you ask a few questions because I said I would let you. And then we're done here. Go ahead, brother. Okay. Okay, brother. So do you agree that the Most High allows us to be with other nations and women? Any nation outside of the Deuteronomy 7, we don't see it prohibited. Okay, so what was um, what was uh, Solomon's sin? Solomon's sin was dealing with the uh, some of the seven nations, and also he was building idols and worshiping them. That was Solomon's sin. Okay, so and so we're gonna go to Deuteronomy chapter seven, and we're gonna deal with those seven nations. So you're saying that any anything out of those seven nations we can deal with? That's what the show me a law against it. Okay, no problem, brother. All right. So, so verse one, it says, when the Lord your God bring you into a land where you go to possess it and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, seven nations greater than you. And when, when the Lord your God shall deliver the, be, deliver them before you, you shall smite them and utterly destroy them. You shall not make no covenant with them or show them any mercy. Neither shall you make marriages with them. Your daughter shall not give unto your son, neither your daughter unto their sons. For they will turn away your son from following me. Is that what happened to um, Solomon? Yes. Okay, so where was the nation of Israel going when God told the people to do this? Into the promised land. Where the Canaanites were, those seven nations, right? Mm -hmm. So do you do you believe that God told the people to do this because they were about to go fight the Canaanites or he was telling them to not to make no um, covenant with no other nations? The Bible is specific on the seven nations it listed. So let me ask you a question then. <laughs> are, are we are we holy? Oh my God! Hold on, brother. Hold on, brother. I'm going somewhere with it. Are no, we holy? No, 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 no. Are we no, holy? You're running. That's a straw man argument. No, 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 brother. I'm 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 getting somewhere with this. Are we holy, brother? I know. I know where you're going. You're going to Ezra. You're going to Ezra. Show. I'm not going to go to Ezra. I'm not going to go to Ezra. Show me. To First of all, let me just make this disclaimer. Okay. We're not suggesting that you go, anybody go and deal with heathen women. All we're saying is, is that the product of a heathen woman is still an Israelite. That's all we're saying. Both of my wives are Israelites. So nobody's suggesting go deal with heathen women. All we're saying is if they did and it's outside of the seven, it's not a sin. And the baby is still an Israelite because you are who your father is by the seed. That's all we're saying. So are you trying to turn this into a who we can marry and who not? Because the subject matter here is what a mamzer is, brother. I, I, do you agree? I, I told you that an Israelite man and a heathen woman. So that's a mamzer. OK, that's the same. So you're saying that it's a sin to deal with the heathen woman. I'm telling you it's a sin and I'm going to show you in the Bible. OK, did Boaz commit a sin? Yes or no? Under the law. Okay, I so said under yes. the law. No, no, yes or no. He did not. Okay, so you just cut yourself. Second question. If uh, if, uh, if King David married a Jeshurite woman, you remember the Jeshurites who we couldn't put out, right? The Jeshurite women lived in, 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 inside, of our, inside of our cities. Right, but they were still not of Israelite stock. They Israelites lived there. I said Jeshurites. Jeshurites are not Israelites. I said they live within our cities. It's one of the nations that Joshua defeated. Okay, so if we marry one of them, is it a sin? If we go to war with any nation and we find a young girl that hasn't been touched, we can take a young girl. Yes. Okay, so marrying a heathen is not a sin under certain circumstances. I said in the law. I've been I've been griping on that the whole time. Now can can I just can I just go to the heathen and then you can tell me you can say whatever you want. I just want to prove that we cannot touch other women. 
other heathen women, unless we go to war. I just want to prove that. You can prove that. I want everybody to hear that, though. You said it's a sin, but then you said Boaz didn't commit sin, and then you're saying, well, if you get them at war, it's not a sin. And I'm, I'm basing it off of Leviticus 25, and that's the Boaz part, and also the, uh, Deuteronomy 21, which you can marry a woman in war. Yeah, so that, you hasn't, can't that hasn't marry been touched by another man. Okay, but you can marry a heathen, though, for the record, right? If she hasn't been touched by another man, yes, in war. You can't just go out and marry another nation because you live in America. No, let me let me get this. Let me get this, and then I'll hand it. Uh, I'll hand the mic to you, bro. So I'm gonna go to Malachi chapter two, verse eleven. Who? Hello? Yeah. Can I go to Malachi chapter two, verse eleven? Go ahead. I'm not stopping you. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and read it, bro. Verse 11, Judah hath dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah has profaned the holiness of the Lord, which he loved, and has married the daughter of, of a strange God. The Lord will cut off the man that do this. Can you can you break that down, brother? Yeah, that's talking about their gods, idols. When it talks about women in the scripture, especially the wife of thy youth, that's talking about us leaving our God, our truth, and going and joining with these other heathens' idols. Not, no, 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 brother. Not necessarily. You can say no all you want. You've been wrong this whole time since you've been on here. Okay, so why did it say has married a strange God? I'm giving you my understanding, and you're not going to pigeonhole me into Okay, no problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. So I, I, I broke it down, and then I'll, I'll show you in the law where we can't do it either. And we can go to Numbers chapter 36. Well, if you want it. you're saying we can't do it, but then you're saying we can do it. You're confused. Really? So if I'm you're telling going, you, if you're going to teach this doctrine, you need to let it. I'll be asking you questions. Is it a sin? No. Then I'll say, well, Boaz did it. Did he sin? You'll say, I'm sorry. I'll say, is it a sin? You say yes. I'll say, well, Boaz did it. Did he sin? You'll say no. You are confusing not just me, the whole 500 of people watching this video right now hey so if you're you, going you, let them let them make up their own this let them make up their own minds all i'm saying is under the law type of one if you're confused and type of two if he makes any sense and don't be biased y'all this is not a sakari channel this is a it is a sakari channel but it's also a hebrew israelite channel we don't have to force nobody to believe what we believe put a one if you're confused put a two if he's making sense All right, brother, you can look at the chat. They've spoken. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to let me let me let me ask you if Jephthah, 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 he was an Israelite because his mom was a heathen. Was Jephthah an Israelite? Yeah. He lived with his father, but his brothers kicked him out and he had to go to a different land. <sighs> brother, but I thought a Mamzer is not an Israelite. I never said a Mamzer wasn't an Israelite. I just said they can't live amongst the people. That's all I said. Okay, so a Mamzer can be a king over Israel, but can't live amongst them? Well, Solomon sinned, and ten of the and ten of the tribes were taken away from Solomon's son well, and given to, me, to somebody listen else. To me, listen to me, because I'm really feeling like. That you do you want to hurt yourself right now? Do you need me to call? Do you need do you need medical attention? Do you want to hurt yourself? Because you're acting kind of crazy right now. You're acting like you have a mental disorder. Like you need some Ritalin or Zoloft, brother. You just said that Jephthah was mixed, and Jephthah's a Mamzer, but he's an Israelite, and that a Mamzer can't live among Israel, but they could be king over Israel. Jephthah was king over Israel. Yes. Oh, okay. He they didn't have kings yet. He was a ruler. Let me, yeah, a ruler, a ruler, my bad. So he could be a ruler, not technically king, but he could be a ruler over Israel, but he can't live amongst them? Well, they, they had to go and, they went and got him and asked him to 
fight a battle for him. So that's neither here nor there. But Mike, what I'm trying to say is Deuteronomy chapter 21 says that if you go out to war, you can find a, a young girl that you want to marry and you can marry her. Leviticus 25 talks about the, the near kinsman. And that's all I'm trying to say. I'm only going with what the Bible says. Okay, well, if anybody me. wanted to disagree, did that's King fine. Did cool. go to war with the Jeshurites? Did what? The King David? Yeah, we go did. To war uh, Joshua with did. Joshua did. He defeated. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now watch this. Watch this. So <laughs> I can I can pull it up, brother. I can pull it up. I want everybody to hear what you're saying. I want everybody to hear what you're saying. Once we go to war with them, we can have them, we can, we can wife them up forever. If we go to war with them, we can take the women that hasn't been touched by another man. Okay, so we went to war with the Canaanites. So we can we can marry a Canaanite then is what you're saying. Well, we were supposed to destroy them, but we we did marry them. Okay, so right now. The law stands. You don't believe the law is done away with, right? No. So according to you, we since we went to war with the Canaanites 3,500 years ago, 3,000 years ago, rather, uh, we can marry them today because we went to war with them. No, brother. We talking about managers. Let's let's get on the managers part. That, that don't make no sense because no, none of us know right. who we are. None put of us one, know who we are. Put a, one, put a one if you want him to stay. Put a two if you want him to go. Kick me out. I don't care. We're not they kicking you out. Me. I'm letting the people decide because I love them. Mm -hmm. And I, I sacrificed my life to do this ministry. So I, I'm doing what they want to do. I feel you. It's your channel. Okay. I last, can only bring out I can last, only bring out what the Bible says, bro. Last question. Samson went and married a Philistine. It says the Lord gave him. It was, it was of the Lord. Was that wrong? Did the Lord command him to sin? Well, it was for a purpose. So you can sin for a purpose. If, if God, God, uh, who was that king that God sent that um, angel to lie? <laughs> I mean, on, God, God does some stuff. Hold on, hold on real quick. Since you mentioned, since you mentioned Officer Hassad, he's calling in. Go ahead, Hassad. Oh, is this? I just called. Is this? Uh, is this nine one one emergency? I'd like to report a crime. Yeah, this is nine one one operator. What's your emergency? Um, I just heard. I didn't see his face. I just heard a man being brutally beaten severely. Um, I don't know how much life he has left in him. You might want to get there quick. <laughs> Yo, either my mom's gonna get beat even worse. Oh, oh, oh. he's. <laughs> Oh, he's angry now. Look, look at how that devil came out. Hey, how did it feel living in your mama's womb for nine months and knowing she's going to get her ass beat, nigga? Yeah, ask him a question. Okay, let me read you a scripture real quick, bro. Sirach 15 and 20. It says, He, the Most High, commanded no man to do wickedly, neither has he given any man license to sin. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. Judges 14 and 2. It says, and he came up and told his father and his mother. This is um, uh, uh, Samson. <clears throat> it says, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, get her for me to wife. So Samson told his mom and his dad, I want this Philistine girl to wife. Then it says, when his father and his mother said unto him, is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. But his father and his mother, watch this, knew not that it was of the Lord. So if Sarah Kitzman 20 says God has never given a man license to sin, how is it a sin? <laughs> to deal with a heathen woman, but it said it's of God right here in Judges 14. I just said what I needed to say, but if you want to go to Judges 15, verse 1 through 8, it'll tell you exactly. Hold on, I got to mute you, Yosef. You got to answer that question because a mamzer 
Somebody whose mom's an Edomite just cut the hell out of your black ass. So I'm going to unmute you, answer the question. You said it was a sin, and then, but the Bible says God commanded no man to sin. So answer the question. You just got cut by a mamzer. Go ahead. Well, at least we on the same page of knowing that nigga's a mamzer. But anyways, let me go ahead and answer this nigga's question, that half-breed ass nigga. Uh, let me see. Hey, and he ahead, came bro. up. What'd you say, nigga? Man, answer, the, answer the question and prove you're an Israelite. Prove you're an Israelite. How, what do you want me to, how do you want me to prove it, bro? Prove, you, prove you're an Israelite. Let's see your mom and dad right now. Let's see your face right now. Hey, let me tell you something. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, let me let me see your face or you're out of here. You got 10 seconds to show your face and prove you're an Israelite. And you just got cut by a man. Let me see Gorilla's dad. Prove your, first of all, he, Gorilla Hebrew always posts pictures of his dad. The burden of proof is on you right now to prove. Where can your, I find that? Where can I find that picture at? No, no. This is about me, you, and Hassad. We're here right okay, now. Okay, no problem. Here. No problem. Tell my niggas stop. Prove you are an Israelite. All right? You got 10 seconds. 10 seconds for what? To prove you're Israelite. Show us your face and show us your father's lineage. My father's lineage. My father's a goddamn Aboriginal, goddamn Indian. Aboriginal Indian. So yes, he is. He's grew, up, grew up on a. Indian. So are you? Huh? So, so so you guys were here. Your father was here before the uh, 1492. Nigga, how am I supposed to know? You're done here, nigga. My my my. <laughs> I don't even have no goddamn. Hey, show your face. I can, I can tell you. I can tell you what tribe I'm from. Show your face. I can show you what tribe I'm from. Wait, wait, hold on a second. Are you Negro only? Yes, I am. Okay, you're Negro only. Prove yes, I am. that the people here prior to 1492 was Negro. Prove to you that? I can I can show you the you records of you heard you ever listen to Dan Calloway? Proof. Go listen to Dan Calloway. He'll break it all down. I want you to break it down. Get off I don't need knees. to. I'm I'm not I'm not trying to prove about <laughs> Get off your knees for the next man. You stand on your square. Me and you, mano a mano, and you prove it. I'm not calling on nobody else or anything. You prove it. Stand on your square. Prove to me prior to 1492, the, Colum the conquest of Columbus, that they were Negro here. How much time we got, brother? However much time you need. Let's go. Go ahead. Let me. I got to go and get my books. Go ahead, go get them. I'm away for you. But we're talking about mansions. I mean, if you want to have a debate on it, I have to get my books. No, no, I'm asking you to prove you are an Israelite and to prove that the, the, this the indigenous people were Negroes prior to 1492. Well, you can go to the uh, let me see, uh, the dictionary. What is that dictionary in 1600 where it says that the people were copper color? Where does copper color mean Negro? Okay, what is a Negro? What is, what is a Negro to you, bro? Wait, hold on, hold on. Are East Indians copper? Are other people copper color that aren't Negroes, my nigga? Yeah. Okay, you're you're cut. So I'm gonna ask you again. Prove that the people here prior to 1492 were Negroes. If not, you're done. Okay, prove that they wasn't, bro. Oh, there's plenty. There's plenty. How about this? How about the Mayan the Mayan archaeology? How about the Aztec archaeology? That depict the same people we say are the Israelites. Who and who are the Omex? Negro, hold on, hold on. Who don't have Negro features. Have you ever heard of a phrase in the world of academia and archaeology called archaeology and artifacts are the eyewitnesses and primary sources of that time? Whatever, bro. Okay. Can you see me, bro? So, so you're a Native American? You're a Native American? Am I Native American? I said my dad was. My mom is a black woman. Okay. So how in the hell are yeah, you? Am I good now, bro? Hold on, hold on. You're you're cut so hard. How are you a Negro only if your father's 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 father is an indigenous man to this country, which we're not Negroes? You know what? Uh, By your bro. own definition, you will be guess what, brother? A goddamn mamzer. No, no, no. What were the Omex? What were the Omex? Were the Omex? Uh, were the Omex black? The Omex were not. Uh, yeah, I got you. Never no, mind, brother. No, no. So are you saying the Omex were indigenous to all of North America? Meaning every indigenous person was Omex? 
I'm what I'm trying to tell you that all Native Americans were not the same. I'm asking you this question. Were all people of the Olmecs the only indigenous people in this land or were there other different people? There is there is hundreds of other different races of people on this okay. land. Are you saying you come from the Olmecs? I'm not. I didn't say that. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just telling I'm just telling you that there were Negroes here. Why bring up the Omex if you don't come from the Omex? Because according to the indigenous people, they were Hamites. And guess what? They spoke an, an African dialect. The okay, let me ask you. Let me ask you a question, brother. Is, is there the same as certain West African Canaanites? You is can there be a different? Canaanite. Hey, brother, you could be a damn Canaanite. Why are you sitting up here talking about somebody's eating my mom? You just cut yourself. If you if if your mom is a Negro and your dad is indigenous to this land, and and according to your faulty understanding, they would not be the same people because Negro only believed that Northern Kingdom is in North Africa somewhere. Then how are you not a Mamzer? That's, if a mam that's a what the Bible person? says. That's what the Bible says. How are you? How are you not a Mamzer if a Mamzer is a mixed person? How am I a mamzer if my, my if my mom is a black woman and my dad's a black man? How okay. would that make me a goddamn mamzer? Black. Where's your black? What is black? It, meaning what? A negro. Okay, a negro. So a negro. What is a negro? This nigga said, "What is a okay?" Okay, so you want to play semantics? What is what is what is a white man? A Caucasian person. Okay, so all white people are from uh, the Caucasus Mountains. White people are Caucasian. Now, are there some people who may look white who are mixed? Yes. But generally, when we say white people, we're referring to Caucasians. So when you say Negro, who are you referring to? I'm referring to the black people that were on the transatlantic slave trade, brother. OK. Are there people who look like the same people that were products of the transatlantic slave trade? Israelites? Yes or no? Wait, say that again, bro. Let me let me let me are marinate there on that. people who look like the same people who are products of the transatlantic slave trade, but but are not Israelite. Excuse me. The whole that whole region that we dealt with were all black people. OK, my question is, so are yes, there people who are not Israelites who look Negro. Yes. OK, Africa, Africans are Negroes. <laughs> so all Africans are Negroes. They're. Not not all of them. I mean, you got some Afrikaans, the, the white ones. OK. How the hell is an East African and a West African look the same? The East Africans got straight hair and pointy noses and little lips. Not all East Africans. I mean, some Ethiopians look like that, but not all. You, you, you're not going to go. You're not going to go to. Do you see how problematic that is? That you're saying a Negro is just a black person with a big nose, big lips, and woolly hair, but they're didn't say that. I said the Negroes are the ones that came on a transatlantic slave trade. Okay, so that, that's on the curses. All right, the curses so, of Deuteronomy 28. That that Mexicans and and these so-called Native Americans that you believe are Israelites don't don't um, don't fall under. Okay, cool, got you. Now, where's the northern? First of all, prove to me that your mom's race and your dad's race are the same people. I thought race was a, a, a concept created well, by the white man in 1500s. Your mom's ethnicity and your dad's ethnicity are the same people. Prove that to me. How, how do I prove it? You want to see my birth certificate? No, no, no. I'm both saying of them say, both of them say both both of them say black. Can you prove to me that the indigenous people? And the and the products of the transatlantic slave trade are the same people. How would you like that proof, bro? How would you how, like that proof? However you want to do it. This is horrible. so. You want to know if if the people that came on a on a slave on a slave boat and the people that were here are the same people? Yes, I want you to prove that to us. I can't prove it right now, bro. I mean, Man. I don't I don't even have the time. This is horrible. So where is the Northern Kingdom at right now? OK, so that, that's a good question. So um, if you if you want to go to Second Ezra 13, it says that they crossed over. He held back the waters and they crossed over into another land. And then they went over there to Ethiopia. Zephaniah 3 and 10. OK, so the Northern Kingdom is in Ethiopia. 
that's what the Bible says. OK, so you said all the you took a shot at my Latino brothers who are, in fact, the true Israelites. You said they're not under the curses. Can you show me them people in Ethiopia getting took on slave ships anywhere? You got it. Show me Latinos getting taken on slave ships. No, no, don't don't do that little kid shit. You said that the North. I can show you that easily. We we prove that with so many lectures, presentations. And OK, debates. so what does Zephaniah 310 say? No, no, don't run. You're not getting out of this. You said, OK, Zephaniah 310. Hold on. Show me who you believe to be the North Kingdom, Northern Kingdom in Africa getting taken on slave ships. Ready, set, go. We did. Me, you, me, you, and every other black person in this goddamn country Are you did. The Northern Kingdom or Southern Kingdom? I, I don't know, bro. The Bible says I will be scattered to the four corners, all of us. Okay, so Isaiah 11 11. You just said that the northern kingdom is in Asherith and that Arserith is in Ethiopia. I need you to show me them going on slave ships from over there. Ready, set, go. Number one, are they in are they in Ethiopia? Yes. And 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 I can prove that in the Bible. Zephaniah 310. That's number one. Number two, when Paul was out there preaching, he wasn't preaching to the to the southern kingdom because we were all in the land. He was going out to teach the 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 he was going out there to teach the Northern Kingdom. Yosef, I got to mute you right now because I'm asking you a simple question. You took a shot at the Latinos. The Latinos went in slavery on ships before they even started coming and getting us by the bulk from West Africa. Take into Europe, look up the Latino diaspora and the Mexican diaspora. You see how I'm quoting sources? This is easy. Everybody should know that Columbus came and took these guys back first. Now, I'm asking you, you're talking about that the northern kingdom is in Ethiopia and that they have to fit the and that Latinos don't fit the curses. Well, show me them in North Africa or anywhere over there where you say the northern kingdom is at going on ships into slavery, brother. Well, number one, Latinos didn't go. It was the Tainos that went and it was on it was like, what, 500 of them? And like 200 died on the way there. That is not going into captivity. They were not captive. That's number one, brother. And then they, the Tainos were wiped out. And number two, the Tainos are definitely not Israelites. Because when C Christopher Columbus got over here, or he didn't get over here, he actually went, he never even made it to America. That's, no, that's number two. And those people were butt naked. They didn't even know what a goddamn sword was. They tried to grab the sword, not by the handle, but by the, by the, um, the 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 uh, shark part and start cutting themselves. So you cannot tell me that they are Israelites and they're walking around butt naked. One thing you did do, one thing you didn't do is prove that them faggot Hamites in North Africa or wherever the hell they are went on slave ships. Look at this. Oh, now they faggot. Those are, those are your people. Why they gotta be faggots? Hold on, Ethiopian. The Bible says God's gonna destroy the Ethiopians. Those are not our people. really. Really? Let me read this. Let me read this. Look really? At, look at how I'm doing and look at what you're doing. You said they didn't go on ships or into slavery. Mexican archaeologists identified the first Mayan slave ships. Man, bro, you're you're, you're a complete Mexican archaeologist. Mexican archaeologist. Hold on, hold on. So there's so well, so wait, so wait. CNN and the Guardian is so you're saying that they're lying here. They're lying. Yeah, they're lying. Oh show me, show me, show me where all Mexicans went to, into slavery. Show me where Mexicans went into slavery, Hold on, and bro. where did they go into slavery? Hold on. Why do they have to lie about? Okay, let's say they're telling truth. Where? Hold on. Hold on. Back to Europe, and there's diaspora even in Egypt. This is anybody can simply just research this, brother. Okay, so the, right now, so I'm asking you. We got Mayan slave ships. We got sources talking about how around six million of them. We're enslaved. Take them back. There was a diaspora. I'm asking you to simply show me. You see how I just brought up some sources? I want you to do that. You brought up something for fucking. I want, I want you to do that. Mexico you City. Show me the North, North African, Northern Kingdom Israelites going into slavery on ships. The floor is yours. If you can't, we are simply done here. Number one. Before I before I bring out my info, brother, number one, you have to prove to me that Mexicans went somewhere to slavery. Prove anywhere they went to slavery. The Bible says that there'll be slaves in the four corners of the earth. 
you cannot tell me name any Mexicans outside of North and South America. That's number one. If you can name one Mexican in Africa, then you won this debate. You show me one in Asia, you won this debate, brother. The Bible says we'll be scattered to the four corners of the earth. That's number two. Now show me a, a Native American that's scattered to the four corners of the earth. Number three, Zephaniah 310 says he's, he's going to get his people from over there in, in Ethiopia. His daughters. Man. That, that's Bible. Brother, listen, I'm going to do this one last time. I want you guys to notice how retarded our Negro only brothers and sisters are. Anybody can look up the Latin, dia Latin American diaspora. Look at all the countries they will tell you they're at. Even in Africa, you can look this up. It's very simple. It's not because the deacon is so smart and wise and all knowing. Now I'm going to ask him one last time, y'all, which he has failed to do. You said our brothers over here do not fit the curses. They weren't scattered. There was no diaspora. There was no slave ships. There was no enslavement. They don't fit the curses. I just sat up here in front of everybody and proved it. And I'm simply asking you, you said the northern kingdom, the 10 tribes are in Ethiopia. Where in the hell did they go into a diaspora or a slave ship on ships? Can you do it? Yes or no, King? That's it. Number one, brother, do we agree that Paul was preaching to the. All right, we're done here. We are done here. Let me post another link in the chat. Maybe we can have another Negro only come on here and we can have a better intellectual discussion than that. And I've been waiting to use that on the Negro only. You're know, always talking about the Latinos wasn't enslaved. They weren't dispersed. They didn't go on ships. We've been showing that for years. Now I've been waiting to ask y'all to use this. And it worked. You say the Northern Kingdom is in Africa. Well, show me them going on ships somewhere. I've been waiting to use that on somebody. So let's get a better opponent, please. Let's get a better opponent. <laughs> somebody said it's about time. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm not. I didn't cuss the brother out or anything like that. So there's a link in the chat. You can see we weren't yelling. It got a little heated every now and then, but overall, I think that was a peaceful, cool, calm, and collected dialogue. Ain't nobody tripping. I'm not stressed about it or anything. I have my I have my smoothie today. I have my my oatmeal today. I took my herbs today. I had a lot of water, so I'm not stressed out. I'm not tripping. Man, I'm telling you, bro. Negro onlys are insane. Insane. Uh, all right. Let's see who we got. Um... Conversation before, but now I'm here. What's happening? What's going on, man? I didn't hear you. Give you you say that say that again. I said, what's going on with you, man? We've had this conversation before on the board. You wanted me to join the stream. I'm here, man. What's up, man? You keep saying that the uh Mexicans are Israelites, the Native Americans are Israelites, and um y'all y'all like to use second address 13, but I think y'all got that wrong, bro. <laughs> like from the the Bible itself, I don't care about outside sources. You did only the Bible. Okay. So where is the Northern Kingdom at today, brother? The Northern Kingdom, if you look at it, Isaiah eleven eleven, it tells you where the outcast of Israel are. Hamath and all those places. Where is where that? Would you get where to, uh, eleven and twelve? I know it tells you that the, the, the tribe of Judas is scattered to the four corners of the earth. How can I prove that? Let me prove that before you go off. Joel 3, what does it say in Joel 3, verse 1? Who went into captivity from Jerusalem? Who was sold into the Grecians together? When did Joel 3 happen? When did Joel 3 happen? <laughs> yes, my nigga, when did it happen? <laughs> From from what I understand, it happened along uh, many times, over and over. 
Am I right? right? No, you're not right. Tyree and Zidon and um, the Palestine, Palestinians sold Judah and the Jerusalem into the hand of the Grecian that you might remove them far from their border. Is that not Isaiah 11 and 12 where it says that Judah will be scattered to the four corners of the earth? Okay. That's the same precept, correct? I mean, the when same context, correct? You, when did this happen, I'm asking you? When we were sold to the Grecians? Yeah. I'm assuming under Greek captivity, but I'm assuming that has happened over and over. Who are we sold to in the transatlantic slave trade? Are those nations not our shoots of the Grecians? I mean, that's the Edomites took over the land of the Grecians, yes, but that's different from it, when this prophecy was fulfilled. That's neither here nor there, though. So you said the Northern Kingdom are in these places. So now, I believe see. that look, I believe that the Northern Kingdom is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Jeremiah thirty-one and nine says that he would cause Ephraim to walk by the river, by the water, uh, the uh, the waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble, for he is a father to Israel, and Ephraim is his firstborn. So if Ephraim is walking beyond, like from like the waters beside the waters in a straight way. That's beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, bro, just like Zephaniah 3 says. Am I correct? Well, no, you're not correct because Jeremiah 31 doesn't mention anything about Ethiopia. And then Zephaniah says, I, I didn't beyond... say nothing. I didn't say hold that. On, hold on. I let you say a lot. I let you say a whole lot. A whole lot. Of <laughs> so Zephaniah 3. Bro, you about to talk about a whole bunch of stuff that, I'm, that I did not say. I did not say Jeremiah 31 not said anything about Ethiopia. I said, Jeremiah 31 9 says that he would cause Ephraim to walk by the waters in a straight way, where they right. shall not stumble. You mentioned Zephaniah. What verse? I what said, chapter? yes, that come from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. What chapter? What chapter? Three and nine? Or what was that? No, Zephaniah 3, 8, 9, and 10 says that they're going to okay. come from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Okay, okay, watch this. Watch this. Zephaniah 3. It says, here we go. 10 from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Is that in Ethiopia or is that beyond Ethiopia? I, did, I said beyond Ethiopia. I'm not the other dude. Don't mix me with dude. Okay, where is beyond Ethiopia? Which way do you want to go? Do you want to go towards Hamas or you want to go inside of Africa? Because okay. either way, if they're coming from beyond the uh, rivers of Ethiopia, we're dealing with Africa, bro. Let's be honest. Because okay. if you're coming from Hamath and, uh, and all that, and you're coming from the one side of Ethiopia, you're going into Africa. Where if is going Hamath? Up to Jerusalem, Where is Hamath? Man, listen, bro. Be Hamath is what? Syria, Turkey, or something? Hold on. Listen, listen. Be confident in what you believe. Be I am confident. And stand on what you mean, what mean what you say. So I am mean. confident. Okay. I am confident, confident, bro. I'm confident. Where that is the northern about kingdom? Mexican. Listen, the listen. Northern Kingdom is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Where I is said that? Where is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia? Be specific. Beyond the rivers of Ethiopia is east, west. I mean, beyond the river, rivers of Ethiopia is north, west, and South Africa, bro. All in Africa. Okay. They're scattered throughout Africa. All right. I want everybody to hear that. He's saying that the Northern Kingdom is in Africa. So I want everybody to hear that. That's so what I said. When Moses said that the Israelites would go on slave ships, was he speaking to all of Israel at that time in Deuteronomy 28? Yes or no? In Deuteronomy 28, yes, he's speaking to all of Israel. Okay. He said, I'll show, me, the, show me the Northern Kingdom Israelites, wherever they are in Africa, going on slave ships to serve slavery. Try Morocco. Morocco is a good place to start. Morocco? Morocco is full with Arabs. Blah, but you also have slaves that came from West Africa through Prove the it. slave trade. Prove it. They're called Hartinis. Let me let me look up the name. Yeah, look it up. Look it let up. me look up the name. Prove it. Let me, I'm gonna look up the name for you, brother. <laughs> Hartini. Let me see. Uh, slaves in Morocco. Let me let me get the name of them. They call free slaves Hartinis or something like that. Let me see the name. Let me see the name. Let me see the name. Haratin. H-A-R-A-T-I-N. Look it up, bro. H-A-R-A-T-I-N. They call they call free slaves. 
They were taken from West Africa into slavery to Morocco, North okay. Africa. Okay, let's take let's take a look at it. Take let's it. Take, take a look at it. Look at it. Let's take a look at it. So if Africa is filled with Northern Kingdom, who the hell are the Hamites then? I mean, the Nilotic folks. The Nilotic people, those are the only Hamites. I would assume so, yes. The, so all of the Bantus. Africa, all of the South Bantus, Africa is Bantu is a language, not a people, first and foremost. But let's read this. Heritage people. The Bantu is not Heritan what? people. Heritage people. It says Heritage Yes, they're Heritan called free Heritan. slaves. Brother, can you shut your goddamn mouth for a second? Inhabitant, let me read this. Heritage, also spelled Heritan, inhabitants of oasis in the Sahara, especially in southern Morocco and Maur Mauritania, who, who's, who, uh, who constitute a socially and ethically, ethnically rather, distinct class of workers in the 17th century were forcibly recruited into the Abid al-Bukhari, the elite army of Moroccan. Okay, can you show me where they went on slave ships for one? And keep, where in Isaiah 11? Hold, hold on, keep, hold on. Go into it. Keep hold going. On a second. Hold on. Show me where they went <laughs> on slave ships. And then show me where Isaiah 11 mentions Morocco. Isaiah 11 mentions what? Okay, Isaiah 11, 15. Let's get it. Okay. Isaiah 11, 15. This will give you a geographical location. Isaiah 11, 15 says, hold on, let me pull it up. One second, 11, let me pull it up. 11. Isaiah 11, 15 no, says. Start at 11. Start at 11. Hold on. I'll go back up to 11, but let me start from 15. Because you said, where well, this, that, and the third, it says, the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, the Red Sea, and his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river. The rivers of, they shall come from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia and shall smite it in the seven streams. The Lord shall hold still the streams again that they may go through. Therefore, shall thou the multitude with peace. Jeremiah 31 and 9 says, I will cause them to walk by the rivers of water in a straight way, where thou shalt not stumble. For Israel is my son. Ephraim is my firstborn. So they walking alongside water, rivers. It says it also in the Isaiah 11, 15, my nigga. Oh my God. Isaiah 11 and 11. Isaiah right. 11 and 11. All right, watch this. It says Isaiah 11 and 15. Isaiah 11 and 15. You said Isaiah, Isaiah 11 and 11, lie. right? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me mute you real quick because you, you lied. You need to clear some of that saliva out your throat and stop lying. Look at this, y'all. Did everybody notice he's trying to assert that the river here, when it mentions river, that is talking about Ethiopia. Does anybody see Ethiopia in this text right here? Does anybody see Ethiopia in this text right here? No. He's conflating and asserting that. Why? Because he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Now watch this. Even Bible Hub knows this. The Lord will dry up the gulf of the Egyptian sea with the scorching heat, the Euphrates River. When it's speaking of this river right here, it's the Euphrates River. This nigga being a liar that he is trying to say that this is the Ethiopian River. He's a liar. For two, back in Isaiah 11, where in the hell, because he tried to talk about a slavery in Morocco, which he'd have to prove that those people were Israelites and that they went on ships. Where in the hell, because he's saying that those are the northern kingdom, where in Isaiah 11 does it mention Morocco? It doesn't. So I'm going to unmute you and I'm going to ask you to repackage that or re-explain it again. Oh, he left. <laughs> He left. Why you leave, brother? <laughs> so like you, y'all. <laughs> that was a lie, though. That was a lie. Sometimes I'll let a nigga lie, but sometimes you cannot let a nigga get off the hook like that. All right. I don't think we even got to this lesson that we were supposed to get into today. All right. I'm going to let y'all choose. Should we keep the smoke going or should we get to the lesson? I'm going to let y'all choose what y'all want to do. Should we keep the smoke going or should we get to the lesson? Ooh, excuse me. Keep the smoke going or get to the lesson? Uh-oh, we got it. We got it. <laughs> Wait, hold on. What? All right. So we got we got half and half. We got half and half. Take it as it comes. 
All right, we'll take it as it comes. Look, if you're in the chat, because we're supposed to be talking about mamsers, we're supposed to be talking about if a mamser is a mixed person or an incest baby, who are some of the kings that were on the throne that these Negro onlys would say is mamsers? And now we got into, is it okay to marry a heathen, who the northern kingdom is? Which I'm cool with. I'm cool with any any type of uh type of smoke, but I would prefer that it stays on topic since I was prepared to talk about what a manager actually is. All right, so we'll just do it a lesson. If y'all want to come on here, just leave it, leave a comment and let me know you want to come on here and talk, and we can talk, right? Somebody says Rhea Boom was a manager. Okay. So let me just try to get through some of this, just so nobody says I didn't. <laughs> you guys are funny. All right, so where we at, y'all? Now, let's just do the lesson. If you got smoke, just leave a comment. Moderators, if they leave a comment, they want to come on here, let me know. I'll post, I'll furnish a fresh link in the chat. All praise to the most high. Now, the reason why our uneducated brothers over there at the Negro Only School they believe a mamzer is a mixed person because they rely too much on the white man's biblical usage of the word instead of the context or the totality of the Bible. Now, let's take a look at the word. I'm going to make this quick so I can open it back up for smoke. So, look, they'll say bastard or they'll take the last the last usage, which is C, Jewish father and heathen mother. Well, how do we know that the uh, Strong's lexicon is wrong here? Because you are who your father is. The man carries the seed. We always like to ask Negro only who believe a man is a mixed person. Well, what the hell is the ethnicity of a East Indian man and a Chinese woman? They have a baby. What's the baby's ethnicity? And they always give a stupid answer. So the brother I was talking to today earlier, he said that uh, Israelite can still be a mamzer. They just can't live among Israel. Well, wait a minute. We prove mixed kings being kings over Israel so they can be a king over Israel, but they can't live amongst Israelites, you're dumb and you're cut with all due respect. So now when we go to what it really is, a child of incest. So this is how we make it cohesive with the context and the usage of the word, child of incest. How do we know? Let's go back to the context. So it mentions that a mamzer can't enter into the congregation, even to his 10th generation. So even at the 10th generation, a mamzer can't enter into the congregation, right? It gives a def it gives an example. Very next verse, an Ammonite or Moabite who are products of incest. An Ammonite and Moabite who are products of incest. This is how we know that that particular usage of the word incest is correct because the context gives an example of what it means by mamzer. A ma Ammonite and a Moabite, product of mamzer, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their 10th generation, shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord, right? So what is the congregation of the Lord? First and foremost, tent generation means forever. So if you guys are correct and a mixed person is not an Israelite or can't live among Israelites, we got a problem because there were mixed Israelites who were living amongst Israelites called righteous, called Judites, called Levites, called kings over Israel. You're done. You're cut. So what is the congregation. The congregation is not just living amongst Israelites. The congregation is the sanctuary coming before the, the temple to congregate and to give offering. So it's saying a child of incest cannot come amongst the temple and to be giving offering and sacrifices because it's holy ground. Let's prove that the congregation is the temple. Lamentation 1 and 10. The adversary has spread out his hand upon all her pleasant things. For she has seen that the heathen entered into her sanctuary. What was wrong with this? They're not supposed to enter the sanctuary. Why? Well, he tells you why. Whom thou didst command that they should not enter into thy congregation. You understand? So the congregation of the Lord is the sanctuary. A man is not supposed to come to it. A child of incest can't come to it. But these guys are saying it's a mixed person. So let's just debunk that real quick. We got mixed people who walked in the temple, presided over Israel as kings and rulers, righteous men, and also reckoned as Judah, Levites, Simeonites, Reubenites, etc. Now let's keep going. Matthew 1. We always bring this out. If a man's is a mixed person 
and a mixed person can't enter into the congregation of the Lord forever, we got a big problem because in Matthew 1, we have Rahab, the, Israel, uh, the Canaanite, being mentioned in the genea. So that means any product of a man, a mixed person, can't enter into the congregation. This is so problematic. This is how we know a manager is not a mixed person. Rahab the harlot is here. Ruth the Moabite is here. That would make David, that would make David a mamzer, but we know he was a man after God's own heart. Through his seed will establish the everlasting holy Messiah. That's stupidity. Get rid of that old, outdated white supremacist doctrine. It's very unintellectual and biblically irresponsible, right? Not only that, Rehoboam. Rehoboam was king. Rehoboam's mom was an Ammonite. And we know his father was Solomon, who was dealing with the Ammonites. You can't get around it. So now we got these guys being, these mixed people being kings over Israel, being righteous, being of the elect. Of course, David. Look at Zerubbabel. He's there. What does Haggai say? He's going to be a signet on the Most High's hand. And then you go all the way down to our Lord and Savior, who the world calls Christ. So now Christ is a mamzer? Come on now. Because it says any product of a mamzer can't enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Stop with the folly. Stop with the madness. Um, let's keep going. We're going to do this quick. Now, some try to say, Ruth, this is good. This is good. You know what, y'all? Give me one. Give me, give me, give me 30 seconds. Because some people say that Ruth is a is an Israelite, which is a lie, right? So let's just because we we mentioned Ruth here in the genealogy, right? Who would be an Ammonite or a Moabite? So any product of that would be uh, can't enter into the congregation of the Lord if these Negro onlys are right, right? So but give me a second. I want to talk about Ruth. I just want to hit a few points on Ruth, and we're gonna show some more kings that sat on the throne who had heathen mothers. Does this mean go get you a heathen woman? No, it just means the product of a heathen woman is still an Israelite. One second. Not if you're ready. Oh, my bad, y'all. All right. Let's put a link in the chat for whoever this is right here. Um, Dale Bonds. And all you super chatters, forgive me. I was so locked into um I was so locked into these these couple discussions. I really appreciate y'all. From Seattle to 1980. Don't be rushing me, boy. <laughs> uh, I appreciate y'all's um, true knowledge. The black Jews of of Israel, chill out, chill out, bro. Just chill out. Click the link and chill out. Have some decorum, and we can talk about whatever you want. Have some decorum, and we can talk about whatever you want. So let's see. All right, I put a link in the chat. All right, let's uh all right, true knowledge, you're live. Yeah, this is me from Instagram, I'm from DC. Oh, what's up, brother? What's going on? So uh you you said that you wanted to say something. Go ahead, brother. I'll let you I'll let you just start with what you wanted to say. What did you mean by the by the comment you made? I right, hold on. first though, first though, I want to start off by saying fuck no Mexicans, all right. I don't respect what y'all do, how y'all be. See, y'all go harder for the Mexicans more than... 
Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Why is it just the Mexicans? What about the Puerto Ricans and Dominicans? Can you unmute me? Yeah, what about the Puerto Ricans and Dominicans? What is it about the Mexicans? Did they beat your ass one day or what? Nah, nah, ain't none of that, Slim. Yeah, me. Okay, okay. So I'm asking you a question. What about the other Latinos? Why why you got it out for the Mexicans? What they do? I know them Serenos threw up a couple times. You mean like Puerto Ricans enough? Yeah. Fuck them niggas too. Okay, so basically just fuck all Latinos. Yeah. You know the Seven Kingdom say that that Judah would be vexing Ephraim, right? You know you're just proving that they're tell you why though. You know, you know, you know that that proves they're Israelites, right? True knowledge. You're, hold on, brother. Come on, come on in. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I said you heard. Him. Yeah, I hear you. So I see you got some boxing gloves on. You think you can boot Canelo Alvarez ass? He a Mexican. He'll knock your ass out. Man, that nigga a white boy, man. So will he knock you out? Yes or no? I may say probably will, but fuck that nigga. Hey, you knock your ass out. Do you believe in the Bible? Because you sound so stupid. Do you say yeah, I believe? Yeah, I'm all right, all right, all right. OT only though. Okay, well, break down Jeremiah 23 and 5 then. Because right now you just sound like a stupid ass we Washington DC. We, we came. Listen, you sound like a stupid ass Washington DC nigga. You're making Washington DC look bad. Break down Jeremiah 23 and 5 and show me you got some education and Bible sophistication instead of, oh, fuck these guys and fuck these guys. You're mad because a Mexican whooped your ass in boxing. I know you're a boxer and them Olympic Mexicans be whooping your ass, nigga. So just break down Jeremiah 23 and 5 instead of all this stupid ass gang talk, man. Break down Jeremiah 23 and 5. Man, look, man. I thought we was going to come and talk about the comment. Break down Jeremiah 23 and 5 because you're just so emotional because the Mexicans was whooping your ass in the Golden Glove preliminaries. I'll go back. Yeah, All right, Jeremiah 23 and 5. Break it down. Man, we can't hear them talk about it. Oh, man, get out of here. Anyway, back to my presentation. Nigga <laughs> said the Mexicans was whooping your ass in the Golden Glove preliminaries, and now you're mad at it's a car. Can we get a smart Negro only on here, so I can actually go to some scholarly sources, some academia, and show you that the Aztecs got a city named Issachar. The Seminoles called themselves Reuben. The Taino Taino Indians knew who they were. The archaeology. The artifacts, the books. Can we get a smart one of you guys on here? Because why would I waste scholarly sources on a nigga that just said, man, fuck the nigga, man. Hey, man. Oh, hey, fuck them. I don't care about that. You sound like somebody who got their Tyco power wheel took, got your candy took by the Mexican at the carnival. You got you won a basketball, you won some type of goddamn stuffed animal at the carnival. A Mexican took it from you, and now you're just mad. <clears throat> All right, where was we at? I'm gonna have to delete. I'm gonna have to delete this video. All these curse words, all these emotional grown men. This is ridiculous, bro. <laughs> you want to talk about Hassan's mom? I want to talk about Mex first thing they say is Mexicans don't want to talk about you know why he didn't want to talk I got Maccabees shout out to my brother Maccabees Maccabees you know why they don't want to talk about them Puerto Ricans because them Puerto Ricans live on the east coast and them Puerto Ricans will whoop them niggas ass so what they want to do is they want to talk about the Mexicans in California that they'll never see they'll never have to see it's always a nigga from down south or the east coast talking about a Mexican. They be talking that shit because they ain't got to deal with the Ferran Serranos and Florencias and the Northanios. Them niggas whoop your motherfucking ass. Excuse my language. But them niggas don't be, them east coast down south niggas, they all they never say F the Dominicans and the Puerto Ricans and the Latin Kings start slapping you niggas up, hitting you with that buck 80 and them toothpick. What is it? Them ice picks they be carrying. You niggas want to talk about them. <laughs> you understand? Am I talking good? All right, so uh, hold on a second. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna have to delete this video. <laughs> anyway, 
So we got Ruth here. We got Ruth. This message will self-destruct. This message will self-destruct. All right. Y'all don't know about that, Inspector Gadget. Y'all know about that, Inspector Gadget. This video will self-destruct in approximately 10 minutes. All right. So we got Ruth. Certain people try to say that Ruth is a Israelite because they have the stupid doctrine of, oh, it's a mixed person. It's a mixed person, which is wrong. Um, Where was we at? Okay. <clears throat> right. The Bible says she a Moabite. So either you're going to agree with the Bible or not. Either you're going to agree with the Bible or not. Right? So, Ruth, let's just prove that she's an Israelite real quick. I'm sorry. <laughs> forgive me. A Moabite, as the Bible calls it. So according to their understanding, there would be Mamzers all in the lineage of Christ, which would make him one, which is stupid. A Mamzer is a child of incest. <clears throat> so let's go right here. Deuteronomy 2, they try to say, oh, the Israelites took over the land. The Israelites took over the land of Moab. The Israelites took over the land of Moab. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 2 and 9 says what? Here goes the dagger, y'all. And Yahweh said unto me, distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle, for I will not give thee of their land for a possession. Be a cut because I have given her un, uh, unto the children of Lot for a possession. Oh, that's such a dagger. Niggas be like, the Israelite, she's a she's an Israelite that was living in Moab. That's why I called her a Moabite, because the Israelites took it over. Nigga, God just said he would not allow the Israelites to take over the land of Moab. <laughs> Hold up, wait. <laughs> right? That's the first cut. That's the first cut. Watch this, though. Let's keep going. Ruth 1 and 10. Ruth 1 and 10. Look what it says. And they said unto her, they said unto her, surely, surely we will return with thee unto thy people. I thought Ruth was the same people as Boaz and Naomi. Huh? I thought they were the same people. They're telling her to return to her own people. What you going to say? Oh, the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom were acting like different people. But they knew each other. Here's insult to injury. Ruth 1 and 15. Look at what she says here. <clears throat> And she said, behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back to her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. Clearly a distinction between people. Israelites are one people. Israelites have one God. One power, Yahweh, the Shammai. Deuteronomy 6. Let's keep going. Ruth 1 and 16. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. If she's northern kingdom, Yahweh was already her God. This is so simple. This is why some of these Christian apologists just be laughing at us. Because it just it's just ridiculous that we have to even do a breakdown the Bible called her a Moabite. She's a damn Moabite. It gets worse. Ruth 2 and 10. Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. What the? <laughs> I went to Revelation. Salakia. <laughs> Ruth 2 and 10. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I, why have I found grace in thine eyes? Look at this that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger. Michael Hayden, the water king, y'all watch me, I greatly appreciate you, brother. Hey, Michael Hayden, wasn't you the brother who came on here and we debated a couple days ago? I think we debated about the law. Is that you, Michael Hayden? 
I done spanked this brother so hard he had to come drop this donation on your boy. Okay, okay, Salakia. <laughs> Was that Michael Evans? That might have been Michael Evans. I thought I spanked that brother so hard he had to come back. He had to spin a block and drop a, a C note on your boy. Okay, cool. All praises. If you got a question, brother, I'll put the link in the chat. Give me one second. <clears throat> so look at this. It's look at this. The word stranger. The word stranger. Why is Ruth saying she's a stranger? This is so this is this is probably one of the biggest cuts to prove that Ruth is not an Israelite. It says she is calling herself a stranger. Now, guess what, y'all? This is not the word ger. This is not the word goyim. This is not the word goy. We got a problem here, saints. This word for stranger in the Hebrew is never in reference to an Israelite. Now, the word ger is yes. Watch this. Oh, my goodness. Why is this in the Hebrew? Why is this in the Hebrew? Is it, is it in the car? Let me see. Am I an old man? Yep, look at this. I'm not an old man. I'm a young man. And I'm also a new man. Now, look at this. Every time this word is used, it's in reference to a non-Israelite and their land. Never will you see this word. Look at this. You can sell dead rat or dead animals to the alien here. You can, you can commit usury on this person here. You can't set this person over your people here. You can commit usury again. Look at this. Never, ever, ever is this word in reference to an Israelite. I've already fact-checked this already. That's a cut. Now, the word for stranger, goy or ger, is reference, uh, can apply to Israelites and non-Israelites sometimes. But the word that Ruth called herself is a word that is always in reference to heathens and never in reference to an Israelite. Now that is a cut. Let's keep going. And Boaz, verse 11, and Boaz answered and said unto her, it hath fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother in the land of thy nativity and art come unto a people which thou knewest not here to four. Wait a second. The Northern Kingdom, if she was Northern Kingdom, like these dummies say, if Ruth was actually Northern Kingdom and the Bible's lying, because that's what these niggas are saying, the Bible's lying, she's Northern Kingdom, then why in the hell is Boaz saying that her people never knew our people in this type of intimate or close? Huh? The Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom knew each other. Close with each other, loved each other, were under each other, were by each other, proximity spiritually. But he's saying these people never knew them like this until now. Can't be Northern Kingdom. Look at this. The Lord recompensed thy work and full reward given thee of the Lord of God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. So you mean to tell me the northern kingdom didn't know the Lord to trust him? They didn't know he was the God of Israel? Get the hell out of here. We just got to stop with the stupidity. We have to. Let's keep going. Right now, we're just proving Ruth is a Moabite. That's it. Ruth 4 and 5. Look at this. Then Boaz said, what day thou buyest the field from Naomi, thou must also buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess. The word Moabitess in the Hebrew is the feminine way of saying Moabite. The Bible calls her a Moabite, the wife of the dead, to raise up a name for the dead inheritance. And the kinsmen said, I cannot redeem it from myself, right? Now, this was, look at this. Now, this was the manner in former time in Israel concerning re redeeming of the, look, look. so basically what they're doing here is they're talking about how if the kinsman does not want to redeem the woman, she, 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 she is supposed to take off his shoe and slap him in the face. Where's that in the law? Deuteronomy 25. Deuteronomy 25, verse 5. If thy brethren dwell together, if they die, if he don't have a seed, his brother has to take his wife and he has to give her a child. Look at this. And it shall be, he should say, uh, verse 7. And if the man doesn't want to take the brother's wife, then let his brother's wife 
go up to the gate unto the elders and say, my husband's brother refused to raise up uh, unto his brother a name in Israel. He will perform it. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Look at this. Then the elders of the city shall call him and speak to him. And if he's and if he stand to it and say it, I, I don't want to take her. Then shall his brother's wife come to him in the presence of the elders and loose his shoe from off his foot and spit in his face. So she is supposed to take his shoe off and spit in his face and slap the hell out of him. Well, Ruth is not an Israelite, so she can't enter into the congregation of the elders to take his shoe off. So who did it? Ruth 4. Therefore, the kinsman said unto, verse 8, the kinsman said unto Boaz, by, I'm sorry, a man plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor, and this was a testimony in Israel. So a man is doing it here. A man is doing it here. Therefore, the kinsman said unto Boaz, buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe. So he drew off his shoe. He drew off his shoe. She didn't take it off. Because she couldn't come into the congregation because she is not an Israelite. Verse 10, look at this. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Milan, have I purchased to be my wife. You cannot buy a Israelite wife unless she's a virgin. You cannot buy an Israelite wife unless she's a virgin. What does this prove? That she's not an Israelite because she was bought and she was not a virgin because she had a husband for 10 years that was an Israelite who died. I could keep going. Verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth and she his wife and he went unto her and she had a son. And look at this. And when the woman said unto Naomi, blessed be the Lord, which have not left thee this day without a kinsman. So the baby was taken from Ruth and given to Naomi. Look at this. Verse 16. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom. This was a CPS transaction, a CPS transaction. How this woman of Israelite Naomi going to take her baby? Because she's property. She's not an Israelite. Let's prove that you can only buy an Israelite virgin. Uh, Exodus 22 and 17. It's called the dowry of virgins. Deuteronomy 22. I'm sorry. Exodus. Exodus 22 and 17. And if her father utterly refused to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. Dowry of virgins. Ruth is a Moabite. Now, let's go to, because this is what we're doing, y'all. This is what we're doing, y'all. I'm going to put the link in the chat. I'm gonna put the, let me put the link in the chat, because I'm almost done here. I want to open it up. I know Brother Michael has some questions, and there may be some smoke. <clears throat> All right, so let's go back here. And this is what we were bringing out earlier, right? First Kings 11 and 1. We're going to talk about more kings that were so-called mixed with heathen mothers who were reckoned as Israelites and sat on the throne. They cannot be mamzers because a mamzer can't do that. A mamzer is a child of incest, not a mixed baby. Get it right. First Kings 11 and 1. First Kings 11 and 1. What does it say? That Solomon dealt with strange women. Ammonites. So Solomon had some Ammonite women. Solomon had some Ammonite women. Well, I'm sorry, we're not there yet. Salakia. Let's just deal with the strange woman. First Kings 11 and 1. Let me get the chat involved here. First Kings 11 and 1. What is the strange woman? What is strange woman according to the Bible? What is strange woman according to the Bible? Anybody know? It lists them out here. The daughters of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Heathen women. That's what strange women are. Heathen women. Heathen women. Heathen women. Heathen women. But wait a second, y'all. Jephthah. We went here earlier and cut the hell out of this guy. Jephthah. Verse, uh, 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 what is this? Judges? Judges 11 and 1. Now, Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty, first of all, he's called a Gileadite. He's called a Gileadite, a Gileadite, an Israelite. But watch this. Watch this. Was a mighty man of valor, and he was 
He was the son of a harlot, and Gilead begat Jephthah. His mom was an Ammonite. His mom was an Ammonite, a heathen woman. Watch this. And Gilead's wife bare him a son, him sons, and he's and his wife's sons grew up, and they thrust through at Jephthah. So they threw him out. Why did they kick him out of the house, everybody? And said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. So he was the son of a heathen woman. Still called a Gileadite. But watch this, y'all. Watch this. Watch this. They kicked him out. His mom was a heathen and a hoe. But watch this. Uh, Judges 11 and 29. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah. Wait a holy second. Wait a cotton-picking minute. Wait a cotton-picking minute. You mean to tell me the spirit of Yahweh, the Holy Spirit? You got to say, oh, we're holy. We're holy. We're a holy people. But he, he's not going to dwell with the heathens. He's not going to, his Holy Spirit can't descend, on, can't come up on a mamzer. You guys got trouble now because according to your stupid understanding, Jephthah will be a mamzer because he's mixed. How the Holy Spirit coming down on a mixed person? Had a Holy Spirit enveloping and, and engulfing a mixed person, a mamzer. You guys don't know what the hell you're talking about. A mamzer is not a mixed person. A mamzer is an incense baby. Watch this. He crossed Gilead and Manasseh, passed through Mizpah of Gilead, and from there he advanced against the Ammonites. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord, if you give me the Ammonites into my hands, whatever comes out of the door of my house to meet me when I return in triumph from the Ammonites, uh, will be the Lord's, and I will sacrifice it as a burnt offering. How does mamzer going amongst the temple giving animal sacrifice when it says a mamzer can't enter into the congregation of the Lord? Because he's not a mamzer. A mamzer is an incest baby, not a mixed person. What does he identify as? Does he identify as an Israelite? Surely he would know. Judges 12 and 2. And Jephthah said unto them, I and my people talking about the Israelites. I and my people were at great strife with the children of Ammon. And when I called you, you delivered me not out of their hand. Oh, it gets worse. Judges 12 and 7. And Jephthah judged Israel six years. And Jephthah judged Israel six years. So we appointed him as ruler over us for six years, but he is a mamzer, mixed person? No, it didn't matter. If you're an Israelite man with a heathen woman and you have a baby, that baby is still an Israelite, even though the marriage is not suggested. The baby's still an Israelite. As you can see, he ruled Israel for six years. We appointed him, anointed him. Holy Spirit came on him. Gratata. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. King David's son. King David's son, Absalom. He ruled on the throne. Hold on a second. Uh, uh, Brother Michael, go ahead, brother. Let me go ahead and get you. Testing one, two, three. <clears throat> oh, Michael Hayden, you're my brother, man. What's going on? Yes, sir. All praises to the most high. Somebody came on here and tried to steal your name a few days ago. But what's going on, brother? Well, you know, I'm named after the the, C, the former CIA chief. Ah, okay. So let's hope uh, he's not listening to this call right now. Uh, he's going to be judged. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> oh, so God. here it is. I, I have six. I have six points, but I'm not going to be long at all. One, I agree with you 100. percent Amamza is a, a child of incest. Uh, I've been a software engineer for 25 plus years, and if you work with these Asian folks, uh, you will know that something is wrong with them. It's, <laughs> and that explains everything to me. It's, it's uh, you know, for anyway. Uh, and I don't want to diverge from the conversation. I mean, we've talked about this before. You've spoken on this before. There's many uh, videos about this subject already, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it is what it is. There, there's no dis dispute in the word on this. Um, one thing I want to say to the brother that was foul mouth about the Mexican uh, brothers and sisters, all skin folk and kin folk, bro, just Hands down, my grandmothers on my mother's side are both are Seminole Indians. My grandmother and my mother father's sides are Seminole Indians. Very dark complected native peoples from the south. Uh, but uh, my mother's father is is a white dude, you know, and all of them swear that they niggas up and down. And I'm like, I just don't see it. They their district their heart shows that it's not the truth, 
right? Mm-hmm. So that's how I just judge. Like, just like Marley, just like the Marley. There, I met I met Damian Marley, and he showed me 100% that he is not a brother, just up and down. I'm the only brother at his. He's opening up a, a dispensary out here. He comes out here to do the dispensary open up. I'm the only nigga there outside of his entourage, and he's looking at me like I'm going to do something to him. I'm a five foot six, 160 pound nigga. I ain't doing nothing to nobody like this. <laughs> you know, at the time I had dreads down in my butt. I cut those off and, and finished my, uh, my vow uh, at 2020, you know. But the thing is, is that when I met him, he proved to me wholeheartedly where his heart's at and it's not with us. And that's, that's all there is to say about him. I, I hate to bring his name up like that or put salt on his name, uh, you know, since he can't defend himself in, pre- in presence, right? Uh, the other issue that I want to talk to you about and ask you about is um, we, my organization is not necessarily a camp um, and I'm not going to advertise the organization because I do not want to take away from Sakari and what you're doing at all. But I wanted to ask you on Patreon, I'm a member. Of, I was a member of Patreon, right? till they cut it off. Uh, I was anticipating connecting with you to, to hire you for consulting and conversation. And I wanted to see, is that still an option? Are you still yes, offering sir. that service? Yes, sir. So what is the best way to get a hold of you? Through the uh, email address? Sakari Seattle at gmail.com. Yeah. Sakari yes, Seattle at gmail.com. I'll do that. I'll do that. Thank you. And mm-hmm. uh I wanted to to show you just a little bit about what we're doing. I can't, I don't know why this won't show my camera. I was it was showing my camera for a minute. Maybe something is uh if you uh click click share again. Click share. I'm gonna, I, I, it's, I'm on an Apple. I don't see the share, but regardless of that, because I want to get you back to the conversation. We made a coin. We published a, uh, we're all software engineers. It's mm-hmm. Issacharites and Judites. We're all software engineers. We created a crypto coin called the body of Yahweh Shai. Mm-hmm. Um, and we actually created a physical coin. Um, it's 24 karat gold plated. Um, and it depicts the 12 tribes. It commemorates 1619 to 2019. Um, and we are uh, publishing it. It has the depiction of all 12 tribes. Um, and it's called the body of Yahweh Shai, the boy coin. Uh, mm-hmm. There'll be a URL that we're going to solicit donations. The reason we're soliciting donations is because we're trying to build up enough equity where we can take loans and start buying some of these payday loan centers, some of these um, 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 living facilities like uh, apartment complexes and stuff of this nature where we can uh, start affording to to eliminate predatory lending against our people. Yeah. Um, I can't really show you the coin because I can't get the thing going, but if I drop it, I think you, you might be able to get a gauge on the weight of this. Yeah, that's um, hard. That sounds like a 50 cent piece. That sounds like 50 cent's first album when he dropped those, that 50 cent piece. What up, blood? And it's what much up, bigger blood? than that. And it's much bigger than that. So we're doing the the, the last thing I want to ask you, and, and I'll let it go at this and I'll contact you through the email. Um, there are these, this PDF that's been generated around it. It describes itself as the writings of the individual patriarchs, uh, Issachar, Judah, Levi, you know, it's like a, a note to their future generations. Have you heard of this writings? No. Okay. Then I'll, I'll save the conversation for when we get on the email. I appreciate you. Love you dearly, brother. And I can't wait Thank to you, one man. day meet you. I can't wait well, to one day meet you. Man, greatly appreciate you, man. I'm going to be doing a lot more traveling due to uh, certain situations. I, I, it's not bad. It's actually good. The most high has been to force me to start traveling. So, oh, you know, crazy. just hit me on the email and Lord willing, I'm in the, uh, your region and we could definitely link up. All praises. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Love you dearly. Take right, care. Shalom. King. Shalom. Shalom. All right, let's let's try to finish this out, y'all. Let's try to finish this out. Good, good, beloved brother Michael Michael Hayden, the Water King, for all your support over the years, brother. Um, let's go back to. So we just proved that Jephthah. Now there we go, King David's son. King David's son. Let's get another king on the throne. King David's son. Uh, <clears throat> Here we go. First Chronicles 3 and 1. Now these were the sons of David, which were born unto him in Hebron, the first Amnon, and uh, Ahinoam of the Jezreelitis, the second uh, Daniel of Abigail the Carmelitis, uh, the third Absalom. Here we go, y'all. Key point. Absalom, the son of Ma'akah, 
the daughter of Tilma, Tilmai, king of Jeshur. This is a whole nother king. At this time, there's only one king over Israel. That's David. He's he's under both kingdoms. He's the only one. Him, Saul, him, Saul, Solomon. And then it was one more who had the unified kingdoms, right? After that, the kingdom split. So here we here we have King David has a baby by another king. There's not two kings in Israel. This is a heathen from Jeshur. The Jeshurites were Transjordan people uh, from the Transjordan area, rather, ancient or original Syrians, which were non-Israelites. Joshua 13, 13. It says, but the, uh, nevertheless, the children of Israel expelled not the Jeshurites, nor the uh, more the Maacathites, but the Jeshurites and the Maacathites dwell among the Israelites unto this day. These were people in the land before us who we could not drive out. They had sovereignty and autonomy, which is why Absalom was able to go hide in Jeshur. And King David was sad because he couldn't go there. He didn't have jurisdiction over that place. This is this is a fact when you look at the historicity of the Bible. So we have Absalom having a heathen mother by this Jeshurite king. He's still called a Judite, and he was still king in Israel. So how the hell is a mixed person a mamzer when this dude is king over Israel? This is 1 Kings 15 and 5, first and foremost. Because somebody might say, well, King David sinned by doing that. Where 1 Kings 15 and 5 says King David only sinned in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. So you're cut there. It says he did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and had turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. That's a cut. Let's prove that Absalom was appointed king by us, the Israelites. 2 Samuel 19 and 10. Here's the dagger. Here's the dagger. And Absalom, look at the Israelites speaking here. And Absalom, whom we appointed over us, whom we appointed over us as king. Look at this Mamzer king on the throne. You're right. Why am I saying that? Because a Mamzer is not a mixed person. A Mamzer is a child of incest. Because this mixed person was anointed over us as king and reckoned as a Judite in Chronicles. So it says, we appointed him over us. And what else? Deuteronomy 17 and 15. Uh, he had to be our brother. Because we cannot set in any wise a king over us who, who the Lord did not choose and one from among thy brethren. We must not set a stranger over us. That's a cut. Now, let's go to Rehoboam. Let's go to Rehoboam. Let's go to Rehoboam. Now, we know Solomon dealt with Ammonites, 1 Kings 11 and 1. So, one of his wives, Naamah, was an Ammonitess. She had Rehoboam. 1 Kings 14, 21. Rehoboam was king over Israel, walked in the temple, was righteous. He messed up towards the ends of his life, but during his life, he did some righteous thing, and the Lord was with him. Now, look at this, 2 Chronicles 10 and 1. Look what we did to this person who had an Ammonite mother. He was still reckoned as a Judite in Chronicles. He's in Matthew 1, the lineage of Christ. He's in Matthew 1, the lineage of Christ, right here. Matthew 1 and 7. Right. So Second Chronicles 10 and 1, it says in Rehoboam went to Shechem for Shechem, where all Israel came to make him king. He was reckoned as an Israelite, even though he had an Ammonite mother, walked through the temple and everything. Let's keep going. Second Chronicles 12 and 11. Look at this. Whenever this time about Rehoboam, this time about Rehoboam, whenever the king went to the Lord's temple. Whenever the king went to the Lord's temple, you guys are cut here. This is just beating the dead horse. The guards went with him, bearing the shields. And after they returned to him to the guard, he was in the temple, amongst the temple. Um, okay, I think that's some other stuff. 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 But as we can see, we got David, who's a product of mixing. He was king over Israel. Rehoboam, a product of mixing, king over Israel. Jephthah, product of missing, judge and ruler over Israel. Absalom, product of, product of missing, 
mixing, still king over Israel, congregating among the temple, wrecking it as Judah. Some of these people in Christ's lineage. So they can't be no damn mamzers. A mamzer's not a mixed person. A mixed person, an Israelite with a man who has a heathen wife and have a baby, that baby's still an Israelite. You understand? So with that, I'm going to open it up real quick for some questions, comments, or smoke. I'm going to open it up real, real quick for questions, comments, and smoke. What's going on? What y'all got? Uh-oh. What the heck? Can y'all hear me? Mic check, mic check. Can y'all hear me? Mic check, mic check. I done messed around and turned Siri on. Put them ones in the chat if my audio is good. Put them ones in the chat if my audio is good. All praises. All right. Let's get some questions, comments, and smoke. You can click the link or you can just type your question in the comment board. Anything that I said through the duration of this broadcast, anything that's outside of this topic, Bring it out, what we got, y'all, what we got, what we got. Mm-mm-mm. What we got, what we got, what we got. Okay, I see a couple questions. Let's take a look. Deacon, so a female mamzer can have a child with an Israelite and that child being an Israelite? I'm not sure what you mean, sister. Um, They're saying a man is a mixed person. It's not. Because we proved that the Bible says a man can't enter into the congregation forever. And so we got people who are mixed in the congregation, in the temple, being kings. So it can't mean a mixed person. It would have to mean the other definition, which means an incest baby. King Corn, if that's talking about the false prophet, then yes. All Latino and all Mexicans aren't Israel, just like all black people are Israel. A small remnant of each of each distinct people group are a product of rape. A very small percentage of each people group are a product of rape and also mixing. Like let's say, you know, the Irish came to some of the Irish came to Mexico. They were they took a indigenous Mexican woman and had a baby, and that baby would not be an Israelite. And if that and so that baby seed line will go on, but it's not the majority amongst the Negroes or the Latinos. But of course, in every nation of people, it's never homogenous. I mean, they're not all one thing, but by and large, of majority due to amalgamations, amalgamating rather and assimilating. So you have a remnant of all people groups that exist today who are who have some rape products and also some mixing products. But by and large. Uh, let's see. Hmm. All right, y'all, I need to go walk. I need to go walk for a minute. I need to go walk like a stir fry. I need to go walk like a stir fry. Did you really think you were finna do that? No. But did you really think you were finna do that? So why don't I tell you to get ready? You ain't ready yet. All right. Can you explain Deuteronomy 2 and 9 and 2 Kings 3 and 24? I think conquer. I think I can answer your question without looking and tell me if I'm right for time's sake. We were not. To, David conquered the Moabites. Yes. Um, but I don't think it says he took their land. Deuteronomy 2 and 9 is specifically saying taking their land. Now, the point is, is all of that, what King David did and going to war with them and conquering them is all the way after Ruth. That's the point. Deacon, you have an energy vampire. <laughs> Asians have answered it. Whosoever they'll save his brother. Deacon, what about an Israelite who committed incest with an Israelite? Then that baby's a mamzer. Uh, this is what I'm saying. 
Mamzer is incest. Mamzers are a product of incest. We don't celebrate wedding anniversaries. Well, according to my research, I have not seen anything idolatrous about anniversaries. Now, I don't do it, but, you know, I haven't seen anything wrong with it. Ariala, why did you hide uh, Kwame Asharala? Why did you hide it? What did he say? Um, Ariala, unhide him and just time him out. Okay, did you did you undo it? Why is Bible cuts time? Why do you guys time out Bible cuts? What did he say wrong? Bible cuts didn't say anything wrong. Bible cuts is saying I got to enter. Wait, I don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe he insulted me and I I need to slow it down because he just dissed me. Anyway, y'all, let's give all praise, honor, and glory to you. How about Shema Mashiach Yahushai? Go see some folks getting slapped up. Go see some heated debates. Uh, go see some people getting slammed on their neck like Kurt Angle on um, on uh, Zion.network, CZYN.network. Go go see some of that. New content is up there right now. It's too hot for YouTube and it's early releases. So go see some people getting slammed on their neck like Kurt Angle. Hey, it happens. You know, go to CZYN.network, promo code Deacon Sakari, promo code Deacon Sakari, promo code Deacon Sakari. Link is in the chat. I love y'all. Make sure you hit that like button on the way out. I'll see you guys Tuesday. Lord willing. Um, call all you have by Shemar Shek Yahushai. Shalom. Kwame Shirelli.